kind on everything. I gotta live like a king. <laughs> hey, catch this rhythm. You feel that? That's called playerism. I'm on the scene, a player clean, poker face, four queens, I got four of a kind on everything. Diggers, living elite, I don't feel complete, without kicking at my feet, in a Rolls Royce every week, maybe this is deep, listen close when I speak, I need to at least, cause I'm too much. I'd be a fool if I love him, love him. You'll be a fool if you trust him, trust him. Here with my niggas, we keeping it gangsta. gangsta. Yeah, I'm a slayer, I'm just keeping it player. Player, player, player. I'm fucking her now, we're man, eating it later. Ugh. That's maybe why he is a hater. Hater, 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 hater. I'm wearing all black like I'm being a raider. Raider, 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 raider. You talk to police, we call you a traitor. Traitor, 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 traitor. I'm running the city, they call me for favors. I'm running the city, they call me the mayor. It's getting political with me. My sweet presidential, she give me the little... Quit banging my line, ho. Quit banging my, my line, ho. Hey. When yeah. you see me, me act, act like, like you don't, don't even know me, ho. When you see me act like you don't even know me, ho. Come on, baby, get a clue. How you do what you do? How do you fall in love with me, but I'm not in love with you? Peace to the saints! Peace, Peace to the saints. saints! Peace to the saints. I think I'm going to enjoy this one. I'm also curious about the attendance because I know if I was talking about these fat black women, all you guys would be tuning in. Now we're talking about these deadbeat African-American males. Uh, and then the multitudes who copy them, you dig? They create a model and people follow it like it's something that's cool when it's really not. Oh, we're going in today uh, for a variety of reasons. Number one, I notice consistently I'm dealing with the same struggle, which is to say that my biggest challenge in life has not been racism, that is white supremacy or racism from the outside coming in, but rather it's been hatred from other African Americans or what's worse, it has been me being perceived like the average African-American male, which is in a very low state. And we're gonna talk about what that low state consists of. And everybody in the chat, feel free to speak up today because this is an absolutely critical topic. And for all of you goofballs in the comments who are over here like, oh, well, you know what? The, the oppressor is the one who really set us up in this situation. Yeah, 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 nah, knock all that off. We, we gonna talk about all of it today. And for the goofy black folks who believe in all these weird religions that they didn't made up or seen on the internet or believe in all these conspiracy theories, oh, the boule and all these conspiracy Illuminati groups, that's only a direct result of the lack of education that has occurred in the African-American community. I'm talking about formal education and respect for the uh, arts and sciences, or shall we say the letters and sciences. So we're going to go in today. There's a lot of information we need to get through. Good Lord. Steve's the tuition. Shout out to Steve. Oh, we going in today because I'm disgusted. I'm not going to lie to you. Heck, if you play this back and you painted me, why you like this guy is a real racist? Uh huh. Jordan sent tuition on Cash App. Shout out to Jordan. And Vapor Saint sent a Cash App. He said, Advice for my first amateur boxing match. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. My advice for you, Vapor Saint, is number one, to stay calm. Number two, to work on your counter punching if you haven't already, which is to say that in the first 20 or so seconds of the round, they're going to be hyper aggressive because they're nervous. Be ready to counter punch, which is to say, don't walk backwards. Don't step backwards. You're going to let them walk into your punches. You don't even have to come forward. Let them walk into the punches. That's number one. Number two, make sure you have a high punch output. Work the jab a lot. Number three, make sure that you're breathing. They're going to gas out. So save up your energy for the second half of the first round when they're exhausted. And in an amateur fight, you throw punches in bunches. They get an accumulation of punches. The referee is going to pause it or stop the action. Number four, don't be scared to tie them up if they start landing a lot. Tie them up. Get a little bit of time to rest. It's a mental game. But number one, high punch output. Manage your breathing. Uh, don't get nervous. Stay relaxed. Let them walk into your punches and have fun. Hey, William just joined on Patreon. Oh, William just became a patron? Yeah. Shout out to the real ones. You dig joining the fam. 
Joshua said, peace to the saints. I literally just received both my gray wow. and blue Letterman jackets. I'm feeling extra player today. Let me pop some more drips. So you dig. And shout out to Brother Malin. Hey, um, because it seems like they're getting those Lettermans out really yeah, quickly. Came right back with more tuition. In a real way. And we going in today. This is a, a lesson that has been neglected. You see, we have a lot of these personalities on the internet. They'll either trash black women, not mention any of the faults of the black male, which is ironic because a black male theoretically would be the natural pair of the black woman, hence her leader, also his own leader. And in the absence of dealing with the major shortcomings of the African-American male, what they do is they tend to blame the daddy, which is the white American male. They blame the white American male for the shortcomings of the African American male. And the African American male today is so feminine that they even beg for what are called reparations. What is that? Except asking, uh, as a conquered people, asking the victor to provide you with, um, I don't know, uh, payment for you getting conquered? What? So you're saying you lost and you expect them to pay you or compensate you because you lost the war. You were the one who failed to protect yourself and you expect the aggressor to sympathize with the victim. This is true, truly ludicrous. We're going to get into it though. Hey, drug hour said we all miss out a hundred K hit that like button. I'm so thankful to be a saint. Mm. I'm very happy for you. Quit and grind and real. We really about to reach a hundred K. Let's go in a real way. And still it's nothing to us. You dig? It's still nothing to us. We'll take it and we got much more to get. Neil says, the saints peace to the saints the jordan that sent a cash app he said peace to the saints yesterday i had a girl not let me smash and only give me accessories after we agreed to meet at her house late at night how do i determine if she's an uninterested harlot with many men or she's seeking a relationship and doesn't want me to smash and dash oh, when he says accessories i'm not entirely clear on what that means so number one when you say, yes, so you had a girl not let you smash, go back to that first one, please. And only give you accessories. I don't know if that means like, you know, other pieces of physical satisfaction. Um, I'd be curious. So number one, what is her age? Number two, uh, does she live alone? Uh, number three, have you met any of her friends and assessed what her friends are like? Uh, going to the next one. I'm talking about his part two. Thank you. And then secondly, when you say she an uninterested harlot, well, you see, a harlot is not always a harlot with every man. She may be a harlot with some men and not others. Furthermore, if she wants to stay with you, she has to play with you. But the key is this. I wouldn't let a chick, uh, you know, delay me from smashing if she let some other guy smash off the rip. You dig? Because at the end of the day, I consider myself the best. So I will not be denied a damn thing. And I won't come second to any man. You heard me? So if you gave it to them, you're going to have to give it to me faster than that. So that's something that I'd really be looking into. Uh, because if she is indeed a harlot, she ain't main piece material anyways. If she wants you to be her man in a relationship, that has nothing to do with your goals. You dig? So you're following your goals with no respect for what she's trying to do because she's not the leader anyways. You're going to decide what the relationship is going to be. So I get a little bit more data on this girl. Who are her friends? You know, Has she been smashed on the first date before, which I'm sure she has? Um, what are her intentions? And then I make moves accordingly. For the win said first tuition and love the gray and blue letterman jacket peace to the saints peace to the saints i think that one might be sold out yeah trevor just said i'm copying the red and black as soon as it drops i waited too long to try and get the other color and miss out on those ones <laughs> it get like that bro ones are gonna look nice oh yeah that's gonna be a whole new level right there yes indeed um jordan said she's 20 and lives with her parents who weren't there i don't know her friends uh, oh, well, you should get to know them. See, the thing is, there's one thing to know her friends. There's another thing to know of her friends and to know the nature of her friends and maybe take a little bit of data from her public facing social media, Instagram accounts. Does she drink? Does she smoke? Does she do hookah? Uh, do, do her friends like the party? This is going to give you a sense of who she is. Hey, Brad, the peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Here Let's talk about these dirtbag African-American males. Notice I say males, not men. They disgust me. In fact, they disgust me so much that sometimes when I'm out in the world, if I see two individuals and they're both urban, you know, wearing hip hop gear, I see an African-American male, I see a Latino male, I'm probably more inclined to 
you know, chop it up with the Latino male because with the African American male, I can generally make some assumptions that are damn near always correct. They call them stereotypes, maybe, but the, these are uh, generalizations that are generally true. They're dishonest with themselves and with others. They're irresponsible, can't take care of themselves or their children or their responsibilities. Um, they tend to have no integrity. They don't prize the quality of their work. They don't have any regard for how they represent themselves. How is it that you have your pants hanging under your butt cheeks, which looks very sloppy and like you guzzle Skittles because you want your butt cheeks out, yet you still try to portray yourself as hyper-masculine while wearing skinny jeans? I'm perplexed. You portray yourself as hyper-masculine in hip-hop music, yet you compose more, more than 50% of the prison population in certain states. Hmm, which means that you're in an environment when you're where you're only among other males. There's really no sexual access to the female, yet you're portraying, portraying yourself as hyper masculine. I think that's hyper fruity, to be honest with you. And I think it needs to be addressed. And not only shall we drag all these dirtbag African American males through the gutter, we're also going to take the leadership through the sewer. And you might say, gee, Mark, what? that's a black man talking about another black man. Well, you see, sometimes that would be unwarranted if it was a case of jealousy. Like when you see YouTubers talk about me, they're not talking about my ideology. They're not talking about my recommendations for the uh, elevation of humankind. They're talking about nonsense like, oh, you know, his, his car is a rental, which is a lie. Uh, he he doesn't he doesn't have this he doesn't have that which is a lie. They're trying to deride me based on actual jealousy. And what is jealousy root from? When we look at the primitive drivers of humankind, mostly money and sex. And even when you're considering money, money is usually taken as a tool to get more sex. It is a jealousy that these males looking at me as competition, and really we're no competition. We're in totally different leagues. They look at me and think he's gonna get the girl I can't have. Why? Because he's the ball head lover, you dig? He got the fly Prada glasses custom, you dig? He always big boss chilling in a place I can't afford to be. You heard me? My girl look at his, uh, his IG and fall in love. It's jealousy. When I drag a black leader through the dirt, it's because they're not a leader. It's because they need to be drugged through the sewer and exposed because they're leading you and themselves to destruction. And we can name any one of them. And we probably going to talk about a great many of them today. I'm going in. Go. Hey, Yuma says, been getting better at boxing for my amateur fight and learning the nuances of the sport. Was watching your IG boxing highlights. Your hands are super legit. Hey, I appreciate that, Saint. And the funny thing, too, is in my IG highlights, you know, I'm mostly in the gym sparring. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm surely not trying to knock anyone out. And also, a lot of those, you know, clips – I'm about 12, 13 rounds in. You know, I'm switching people out, fighting people back to back to back. Um, so I appreciate that. That's a very uh, high compliment. Howard Drake said a cash off. He said first time tuition. Wow. Shout out to him. And, and to send in tuition on a live like this, where we're about to drag these African-American males through the dirt, he's a real one. And by the way, I am an African-American man, an African-American man. Some might call it a foundational black American man. But we about to drag these African American males through the dirt. Okay, sauced up beef said peace to the same. Definitely appreciate the words of wisdom and the no excuse approach you live by. Keep on speaking that knowledge for all the men in this world, period, because real men are going extinct. Whoo, in a real way. And and some of these guys think that, oh, we gotta address these harlots and these 304s. We gotta talk about these single mothers. But what about the guys who left them and made them single mothers? What about the guys who were too damn irresponsible to put a condom on? What about the guys who didn't know how to manage their woman? And that's why we have all these guys in relationships. It's funny. I see them walking around Vegas. You know, they're tourists walking around Vegas with a fat black woman. He fat too. What? Come on, bro. You're, you're a black man. You're fat. Your chest looked like the broad's chest used to look before she got implants. Come on. What are we talking about here? 
and you don't have the decency to maintain your own body. Therefore, you don't have the moral authority to turn to that fat black woman and tell her you need to lay off them damn chitlins and collard greens, eating them damn neck bones. You need to quit. Yeah, we're going to talk about all of it. I'm disgusted, truly. Been holding it in for a long time. Eric's intuition. Shout out to Eric. And on Cash App, we have Christians of peace to the saints. What are the top qualities of a leader? The top qualities of a leader, number one, is that you are above those you would seek to follow. This is not something people like to commonly say because we like to pretend equality. No one follows someone they find to be their peer. It's not sensible. The captain of the football team is usually the quarterback or the best player, the person who has a unique ability that you don't have. Number one, you got to outperform your followers in some important area of human activity. Number two, you need to be authentic or believable, which is to say, it is very clear. If you haven't noticed from my haters, they try to question authenticity, which is impossible because I'm the realest one on YouTube. I'm the coolest one on YouTube and we'll keep on repeating it because it's the facts Followers are searching for lies, searching for shortcomings, searching for hypocrisy in the ways of leaders. Why? They would like to lower you back down to their level. Why? Because it doesn't feel good to think someone is above us. So generally speaking, they're going to want to lower you down. They need to look at you and say, Oh, everything he said he was, he is. He said he gets up and exercises straight away. He does. I observed it. He says he's a good steward of finances. Yes, it's very clear, public record. He says that he's a man who lives with integrity. He doesn't have any outstanding child support, doesn't have any children he doesn't take care of, doesn't have any women who claim to be associated with him who behave like animals. He's managing his affairs in a way that I would hope to one day manage my own. You have to authentically be who you say you are and who that is needs to be above what your followers are currently experiencing in their life. So they can have something to strive to and you can have something to lead them to. That's the problem. I mean, consider this. You got a Dr. Umar Johnson, a guy who um, is all about, you know, black, black love. You got to be a black man with a black woman. We can't deal with the white women. It is not right. I'm Ifa Tunde. Ifa Tunde is a pan Africanist. I'm the prince of Africa. Well, bro, why you live in Philly? Why you live in America? Move your ass over to Africa, Ifa Tunde. And moreover, my dear boy, how you a pan Africanist? You must not have traveled sub Saharan Africa as much as I have. I remember when I was in uh, Johannesburg, I'm sitting there with Africans, uh, Zulu, and all that good stuff. You heard me? the pure stuff. And they say, boy, you, you mix what you mix with. I say nothing. I'm, I'm African American. You know, my mama black, my daddy black. They like, yeah, but they ain't black, black. You heard me? They ain't real authentic black. They said, if you lived in South Africa, we have three racial categories. We have the coloreds. We have the, I forget what they goddamn call them. Now the coloreds, I think they said I was a colored, which means that your, your blood is impure. And even if my blood was pure, if I'm not from a particular tribe or collection there, it don't mean anything to them. You hear me? Just like a German is not going to go to an Italian and say, hey, we're all white. I'm a pan-whitist. I'm a pan-European. There's no such thing. These are all separate ethnic groups. Pan-Africanism is the instinct of a weak, small ethnic minority to connect with a greater group seeking power in numbers, but there actually is no power in those numbers because you can never unify a group without ideology. Ideology often has religion as a connection because the spirituality and the fear of uh, hell or heaven or purgatory is what gets the average idiotic people to get on board because they don't have the intelligence to understand the greater goals or morality. There's no such thing as 
Pan-Africanism. Marcus Garvey couldn't do it, and I don't even think he touched down on the African continent, but shout out to the honorable uh, Mr. Marcus Garvey. And then you got a crackpot like Dr. Umar Johnson, who's over here talking about something that doesn't exist, building schools that no one's seen and no one's attended and no one works at, and somehow people are following him when really they're just following a fraud. It's a Ponzi scheme. Send your money, but where does your money go to? That's kind of like what you're experiencing with the American government. You pay your money, but the roads are in dis disrepair. You pay your money, but the cost of goods keep going up. You pay your money, but you don't have free health care. You pay your money, but someone could show up to America yesterday illegally, came and against our laws, break our laws, and then utilize the free health care as an undocumented alien. But me having been here my whole life and generations before me that pay financial taxes and black taxes as African Americans who are enslaved, we can't just walk into a hospital and get free services because they want to see your your uh, your income, your social security, and then they got to validate that you're broke before they give you some free health care in a place you've been paying taxes. But I could come here as a person from El Salvador and get free health care straight off the rip, which is strange, ain't it? Ain't it? And that's how Dr. Umar Johnson is operating, taking your money. You don't know what the hell benefits you're getting from it, huh? Yeah. Hey, JDR said a cash app is that peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And Osmosis said, peace to the saints. I always respect how you have your main topic and you still take time to flawlessly answer the chat's questions. Prove true wisdom on the fly. Absolutely. You know, if you really have, as they say, if you got hoes, it shows, which is an aphorism that I like to use because it, it means if you have the goods, you can deliver the goods. Jacob writes, Marquette looks like he absorbed chaos. I am superior to a Kevin Samuels and have been my whole life. Let's put this to rest real quick. First off, you always see the limits of one's intelligence or one's experience based on how they liken things, meaning based on if they see something, they have to relate it to their past experience. But oftentimes the past experience may be limited, so they liken it to the closest thing. For example, how much sense does it make for me to absorb a Kevin Samuels? when I'm his superior and always have been. Let me give you an example. And people might say, oh, don't speak on the dead. I'm not speaking on the dead, I'm speaking on the facts. Number one, Kevin Samuels, educationally, my inferior, less education. Professionally, my inferior, less professional experience. Um, world travel, my inferior. Business contacts, my inferior. Political contacts, my inferior. You don't compare the son to the father and say that the father looks like the son. You would never do that. He is my son in terms of accomplishments and our name in this world. And you might say, Marquette, why are you so ruthless about that? Because I believe in hierarchy and I will always let you know where I'm at in the hierarchy, which is the big homie. You did in a real way. So let that always be known. I can never absorb someone beneath me. There's footage of Kevin Samuels being basically heckled by a fat white woman who says he owes her rent and owes her money for utility bills because he's renting a house or renting a room within her house. This is the kind of raggedy behavior you observe in the African-American male. I said it when I first started the stream, which is they don't have any goddamn integrity. Integrity to pay your freaking bills. That is a basic. You have heard me on previous streams say, hey, if you have the money to pay your bills, you pay your bills promptly and you pay them happily for it is a privilege and a great thing for a man to be able to pay his bills. What kind of sense does it make to compare a great man to a male who worked at a perfume counter? How dare you? I take it as tremendous disrespect. He worked at a goddamn perfume counter at age 50. I've not even reached anywhere near age 50 and I've never had to stoop to that level of indignity. Working is a beautiful thing. I commend you for earning however you got to earn. But on my level, I will not be compared to a motherfucker who has people spray on perfume and says, that smell good, don't it? You want to get that for Christmas? I can wrap that up for you. I ain't never had to shuffle and shine shoes like that. I ain't never been the go get your shoe shine box boy. I always been living like a hustler my whole life. So I will not be compared to someone on that level. It's inappropriate. Show some goddamn respect to respectable men. And again, hierarchy is an issue among African-Americans. Why? 
because they ain't had a goddamn father around to let them know who's boss and how the pecking order goes. Let me break it down for you like Confucius. You dig? Confucius says you have the king or the ruler and the subject. You have the king and the queen. You have the father and then the mother. You have the husband and then the wife. You have the older sibling and the younger sibling. These are what call, are called the basic relationships. It is the hierarchy, you dig? I wouldn't give a shit if Kevin Samuels was 80 years older than me. When I show up, he gonna call me sir because I'm in the boss position, goddammit. That's like when I get on a private jet, they say Mr. Burton, even though the pilot's older than me and the stewardess is older than me. It's the big homie showing up in this goddamn motherfucker. Have some respect. You'd be a goddamn fool to compare me to a Kevin Samuels. Furthermore, he just got on off some YouTube shit. I just posted a short where you saw me bailing through Las Vegas and a cat walked up to me like, hey, G, I remember seeing you get an award in Houston, Texas years ago for entrepreneurship, which means not only did you do entrepreneurship, you did it at a high enough level that you're being awarded for it. And you did it at a high enough level frequently enough where clearly you've gotten enough awards where you fucking forgot about some of them. Show me my goddamn respect and show every man his appropriate respect according to his merit. God damn it. No motherfucking Kevin Samuels. This motherfucker was broke his whole life. He was only on for two years. How do two years compare to 12 years? How do a motherfucker selling perfume compare to a, a guy like me? I was 11 years old selling dope. You heard me? 11 years old selling dope. That's the kind of hustle I got. He don't compare to me. I've been a hustler my whole life. I'd rather die than work at a goddamn perfume counter. And I'm not promoting crime. I'm just saying I'm cut from a different cloth. Don't compare that raggedy ass toilet paper to this fine ass motherfucking velvet and chinchilla. The fuck is wrong with you? Hey, Joshua sent a cash up earlier saying he was going to get some more drip. He got the black and the red bomber. He got both of them. Indeed. Hey, and remember this. If you was raised right, you could take a little bit of discipline. Jacob, it's all love. I've seen your name before. I know you mess with this ism. But hey, sometimes you, your dad got to spank your ass. Don't compare me to no bum ass Kevin Samuels. Hey, Matt said, man, preach this real. I stay getting called as Tom for espousing the same truth amongst my peers. I am disgusted at what I see from us on a daily. In a real way. And at the end of the day, we have to realize some of these boys have to be beaten into submission. They have to be dominated into submission. They have to be completely destroyed and eradicated. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when you're trying to enforce change, it's going to take an iron fist. Do you think that when the American white man was erecting the whole apparatus of what we call the transatlantic uh, enslavement. You think the Africans showed up like, yeah, boss, I'm gonna pick this cotton. No, they had to make them pick the cotton. Now, in our case, we're not making anyone do anything heinous. We're not turning anyone into a slave. But what we are about to enforce is some of this good culture. What we are about to enforce is pull your pants up, young man, represent yourself better. Huh? Because I'm tired of wearing the same skin as you and being perceived like you, which is a dirt bag. That's why when I walk into VIP services half the time, they think I'm lost because I look like one of you underachievers. When in reality, I'm in the top one to two percent of man, not of black man, but of all men. You dig? And that's from a financial standpoint. That's from an IQ standpoint. It's been tested and verified. That's from an athletic standpoint. That's from a standpoint of talking this shit. That's from a standpoint of getting these women. That's the standpoint of living the best of life. You heard me? But they look at me and I look like one of you goddamn slackers. That's why I hate the African-American male because they're such an underachieving group and I get lumped in with them. That's why half the time when I experience racism, I'm not shocked because I think the same damn thing that the racist white guy thinks because I've been observing their behaviors up close. Can't take care of their kids. Can't manage their own penis is engaging in foolish behaviors, pretending to be hyper-masculine when they're really ultra-sensitive and very feminine. Come on, man. Here we have Khalil came in on Cash App. He said, peace to the saints, master class on male leadership. In a real way. And we ain't even got in. We easing in. Sara said, KS got clapped by either a Red Bull or some Snow White. Don't compare. In a real way. And let me tell you this, man, like how we comparing this broke down. That's how I know you guys have a lack of experience. You look at me and can't even see me and understand me. 
You look at me and don't even comprehend who I am and what I'm doing. That's what sends me over the edge half the time. Do you know what kind of work someone who came from the mud has to do to be out here in the south of France? Do you even know where the south of France is? Do you know what I'm doing in the south of France? Do you know how many trips I've taken internationally this year? I bet my life I've traveled more internationally just this year than a Kevin Samuels has in his whole life. That's not to deride him. That's just to point out there are radically different levels of human sophistication and experience. He doesn't even know how to hold a dinner fork. You heard me? It's, it's not the same. Furthermore, he mentioned the boy got clapped from a Red Bull or, or a, a snow bunny. Look, number one, people who have class and decency don't drink soda. And I know a lot of you guys are in the chat like, damn, Quentin, call me out. Yes, I did. People who have class and decency do not drink soda pop. You damn sure ain't drinking a Red Bull. You don't drink chemicals. That's one thing I like about traveling outside of the United States. When you ask for an orange juice, they hand you an orange juice made from oranges. In America, they hand you a cup of chemicals. And you're so conditioned, you don't know the difference. Or you don't appreciate the difference. You haven't experienced the good side of it enough. So look, if you currently drink soda, I encourage you to stop. You're drinking sugar water chemicals. If you drink Red Bull, you're a goddamn fool because even Kevin Samuels, even though he's significantly older than I am, he was still too young to need any false stimulants. And that's a bad example. You drink five, 10 Red Bulls during a live session with 20,000 people on it. That's advertisement for a company that cares nothing about you. You see, he wasn't a businessman. I would have been taxing those SOBs if I was going to represent their brand that frequently. A hustler know how to tax him and get his bread right. You dig? It's called marketing. But he ain't got the corporate experience and know-how. He don't know how to send somebody over there to talk to their uh to the, talk to their marketing team to get that plug set up. You dig? We on two different goddamn uh, levels. You watch the Sink City podcast, you see we done ripped all the labels off the water bottle because we ain't giving no free promo. You dig? Some Sometimes it's hard to get them off the Fiji. The Fiji bottles is hard to get the goddamn label off. You dig? But I don't mind promoting a water that I drink on a regular basis because water is the elixir of life. You dig? But here's the thing. You said he might have gotten bodied by a snow bunny. It's highly possible because his whole damn life, females have befuddled him. This man has ex-wives. He has ex-kids. Don't take care of them, paying child support. He's not the owner and the master of his own destiny. The government controls his program. I control my program. Don't you compare me to a black man living on his knees. I, I'm a boss out here, boy. Don't even think like that. So understand the differences. Sara also said that it should be noted that he could not send a super chat when typing his full name. Only oh, word. With the initials. Word. So there could be some. That's deep. There. That's deep, indeed. And Sara's always looking out. Yes, like Sara's a real one. You heard me? Sara's a real one. Yeah. Neil said, "Facts, Kellerman." Man, and I ain't even went in yet. I ain't even. And I'm truly disgusted, to be honest with you. Thing that get me mad is people like, "Oh, you know, white supremacy is such a problem." I love white supremacy. Carry, carry on. Latino supremacy, Asian supremacy, black supremacy. Carry on. I want you all to feel like you're the best. Lord knows I think I'm the best. That's why I can't get no tattoos on this pretty brown skin. You dig? The brown skin too damn pretty, baby. You should see how it shines in the sunlight. I'm a black supremacist. If you Mexican, I want you to be a Mexican supremacist. You dig? Yeah. And here's the funny thing. Most white supremacists don't even know about, enough about their own culture to be a proper white supremacist. Same is true for the Chinese and for the Africans, etc. I know all of their histories better than they do. It's funny to me. People don't learn their own history. Once you make a real study of your own history, as well as the history of others, you make a real study of the of the human being. You realize we're all pretty much the same. But some of us have backward cultures either wholly backward or partly backward. And the African-American has a largely backward culture, and that's why I'm addressing it. Reality creator said off the strength. In a real way. Tyree said peace to the saints. This reminds me of your classic rant about the same topic. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and people are so damn sensitive out here too. I remember there was one goofball uh, fan, not of mine, uh, he was a fan of another content creator and he gets there, he's like, how could you talk about him? He's done so much for me. And I say, oh, have you ever met him? 
no. Okay, you're a fool. Okay, let's let's go. Step number two. Uh, tell me one thing he taught you to do in the morning to start your day for success. Couldn't name anything. Okay, tell me one thing he taught you to do in the evening to prepare for the next day for success. Okay, okay. Tell me one behavior he told you to do on a regular basis to prepare yourself for success. Oh, you can't name any. Okay, so basically what you're saying is you're a fan. He's not a teacher. He's not a wise guide. He's an entertainer. He entertained you. I care nothing about entertaining you. I am here to teach and to bring a gospel that must be followed to create radical change in the society. I am here to bring health to you, mental health, physical health, spiritual health. You see all these YouTubers. How many YouTubers do you know where you will see him working out with the people who follow him? You will see me doing that because I live the health and I will help you engage in it. And I will put you around others who will nourish you, huh? who will lift you up. That's radically different. You talk about a Dr. Umar, he mentions a school that never came into fruition. Where is it? Then you look at the saint in the center and you see him creating a school through my conferences. I've done four conferences. The first one I paid for with my own money, let you come for free and learn at zero dollars. I did four conferences, had men there on the ground, men of every color, men of every religion, men of every income level. And we we're there together in education and finances, education and health, education and how to manage your relationships and to thrive. Then we disseminated the information far and wide. This is not comparable to some dude who worked at a perfume counter and got wealthy for two years before he accidentally killed himself. Huh? Yeah, you wonder why you haven't heard the cause of death. We know what it was. It was drugs. Let's be real. He was with the broad. She won a pop a pill. They pop a pill and he get killed. That's what it was, period. I don't care what nobody say. I've had enough experience to know how things go. Cesaro did say he wasn't talking about white women when he said Snow White. Exactly. Saro know what's up. He talking about that white girl. You heard me? Uh, the wh that white girl. That's what Kevin was off of. Yeah. Tony got episode two of conference four and conference one and two for the show. He's about to get his education. Shout out to Tony getting that education in. And Johnny said peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. More else than weak men make hard times. In a real way. They may, they mostly make a hard time for themselves, which you should be asking yourself on an individual basis, not on a black man basis, not on a my ethnic group basis, but on an individual basis. You're in a time where human beings are so weak and fragile. If you can't win now, when would you ever win? You see, I'm always thinking about thriving. I'm always looking at the chessboard trying to be on the dominant side. Asking myself, look at this guy. He says, you are spreading lies. Oh, oh, Kwame, 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 would you like to come on, on screen, Kwame? Would you like to come on screen? Because I'll be willing to destroy everything you stand for. These blacks are so damn weak. Oh, beautiful. You got your camera on, Kwame? Kwame, Kwame. You got your camera on? Turn your camera on. We're going to let you come on screen. While you're putting the link in, um, Jacob said sorry for the comment. He said he wasn't leaving. It's all good. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. Because we all make mistakes. And Kwame didn't just make, make the mistake of a lifetime. Kwame, there go the link right there. Boom! Kwame, bring your ignorant, ugly face online so I can destroy you. Indeed, he's about to make himself into a meme. He's about to give me another 3 million views. It's how ignorant the African-American is. It's how ignorant the average black male is. So ignorant and brain dead. He's about to help me make 3 million views off of him and spread the ism. It's about to be beautiful. But here's the thing. The integrity is so low. They, they say words out of their mouth. They rarely follow up. I hear a word from an African-American male. I don't expect anything to happen. You see, they say snitches get stitches. Eh, Takashi 6 9 is snitched on a whole, whole football team of black guys. He's still walking and buying cars in Dubai. What are we talking about? 
the cryptic here said just popping in to support peace to the saints peace to the saints in a real way the link is out there he ain't gonna click the link he playing games no integrity he's scared they're all scared they're all scared and, and let me while i'm talking about fear i posted on my community tab because i heard a youtuber a, a small little irrelevant youtuber ugly guy oh we might have kwame right here kwame hey first off you little bum bastard let me guess you have a youtube channel you're trying to get some promo for your youtube channel do you have a youtube channel i can't hear you i can't hear you oh god this guy you, i'm gonna pull you out and put you back in because we can't hear you can anyone in the chat hear him can someone like note if they can hear this guy or not i'm gonna pull him out and put him back in these dumb bastards have no sense of any any level of respect you shouldn't even have a conversation with me at this level kwame say something we can see if we can hear you say something say something okay we can't hear you we can't hear you um you might if you can call back on your computer or something like that you're gonna get this work but we no one can hear you no one can hear you yeah we i know you can hear me my boy but we can't hear you now i want you guys to understand this these people have no sense of showing respect to their superiors let's use common sense I would half of these dumb, dirty black bastards that come on this live session to try to contend verbally with me. I wonder what kind of crap they're on. Are they looking at the screen thinking, oh, I can match wits with that guy? You're a fool. You can't match wits with me. Even before I got formal education, I was born to have higher IQ than you. You cannot match wits. Number two, now I got education. I have sophistication experience around the world doing business at a high level, high level chess moves from chess grandmasters around the world. You cannot win against me. Why are you sitting there in your rat trap shoebox apartment watching this live delusional enough to think you're going to come on here and match wits with me? You wouldn't even see me in your regular life because we don't frequent the same places unless I'm there and you're sweeping up as the janitor and i'm there dining as the guest of honor why would you come here to disrespect me you african americans you need to learn some goddamn respect for your motherfucking leaders you respect people who are fools and reflect your deficiencies you respect the dr umar johnson because he's as financially irresponsible as you are that's why you can identify with him when really you need to look at someone doing something different than you're, than you're doing and try to upgrade to those qualities that are going to better benefit you. You want to say something, see if we can hear you? Can you say something so we can see if we can hear you? God damn. This motherfucker too broke to have a goddamn properly functioning cell phone, but he want to fuck with me. Where do they get these people? The boy is too broke to have a cell phone that functions. He over here on an iPhone 4, and he trying to mess with me. What in the look? Jesus. Hey, talk. John said, how to detach from a 3 of 4. She is an earner, but I'm starting to like her. How do I get the most out of her? She is not relationship material and a liar. Mm. Yeah, most of them are liars, bro. I, I hear you on that one. A shout out to you for recognizing that. Number one, when you say she's a good earner, that always brings a, a sweet spot for me when a person is a good earner. It makes me like them. Well, I can't lie to you. When they're a bad earner, it makes me not like them. Uh, as you can see, I, I completely don't like people who are broke, impoverished mentally and financially. Number one, when you say, how do I get the most out of her? It depends on how she's earning. But at the end of the day, you got to keep your foot on her neck. But here's the, the magical bullet. You got to keep your foot on everyone's neck. If you're a CEO, keep your foot on your employee's neck. If you're a husband, keep your foot on your wife's neck. Everyone's neck needs a foot on it for them to produce the most. You did? That is the nature of life. Something will master, something will slave. You'd be a good master when you have a happy slave, you dig? And here's the irony. They'll be happy to have your foot on their neck when you're the right master. That's number one. Number two, when you say that she's a liar, 
if you're a man of merit, these kind of low traits should disgust you and should make you want to rebuke her. And you should engage her both with that love and appreciation for her ability to earn and that disgust for her low characteristics. You see, you can't give her all love and you can't give her too much love. And you also need to give her guidance and correction. So you damn sure ain't gonna let her lie straight to your face and be okay with it, right? Especially if she's an earner, she's working for you. So when you say you're starting to like her, well, that don't quite add up. She's a 304, she's a worker. You should have already created a box for her to live in within your mind. And she shall die in that box. And by the way, when you get you a good team together, you ain't going to be tripping off of one bird bringing you a dollar. That's too good. Um, Stan said, is there proof Kevin was on, I don't know if I can say that word. Oh, he was on that white girl? Look, Stan, number one, this is what you, this is what you asked me. Is there proof Kevin was on it? Uh, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a little bit of information. Number one. Uh, do you do you know what he died from? Was it announced publicly? Let's see. Let's just do a quick search. Uh, cause of death, Kevin Samuels. And I'm going to let you tell me. I'm going to let you tell me. Uh, it says YouTube star Kevin Samuels died of hypertension. What is hypertension? What is hypertension? And why did it take him so long to say hypertension? High blood pressure caused by hypertension. Blood pressure that is higher than normal. Blood pressure changes throughout the day based on your activities, like maybe snorting. Um, having high blood pressure consistently above normal may result in the diagnosis of high blood pressure. Okay, so this young man died from high blood pressure. Okay, uh, can drug overdose, overdose cause high blood pressure? I'm curious. Let's see. Overdose symptoms may range from acute anxiety, agitation, and guess what? Hypertension. Yes, my dear boy, he died from hypertension. Drug overdose can cause hypertension. Okay, now also, he's a person who clearly doesn't care about his body. He drinks Red Bulls back to back to back to back. He was with a female. And I have a lot of experience with females. A lot of them, you heard me, they like to get in their zone before they get maxed out. Have a little bit of drink, pop a pill, you heard me? All this stuff that Bill Cosby went to jail for that super players know is all a part of this lifestyle, you dig? When you're in the south of France, you got five bad European hoes. Two or three of them love nose candy. You, you ever dealt with models? See, you probably never dated models. I'm not talking about an IG model. I'm talking about a model who does runway, actual models that are really skinny. Um, not that this girl was skinny, you dig? But uh, does it make sense that drug overdose and hypertension <laughs> are connected? And I just read that for you off of Google. You could have did your own goddamn Google search. He died of hypertension. Drug overdose symptoms. One of them is hypertension. Do I think that he uh, died from an overdose? Absolutely. Would it make sense to doubt that given his lifestyle? No. He was not a person who ever promoted or engaged in health. There's no evidence of that. There's evidence to the contrary. There's evidence that he was irresponsible, a bad decision maker, impoverished his whole life. So yes, I think a guy like that probably was a dope addict for sure. Now, if the big homie dropped dead and somebody said, oh, maybe it was drug overdose. You know, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Who can run 13 miles as a drug addict? Who do you see always with water, never with anything else, never touched any form of drug? So, yeah, is there is there proof? There's enough for me, my dear boy. And don't call me brother. We're not brothers. I don't fuck with you. And I'll tell you why. I don't fuck with you because I wouldn't stand up and contradict someone I fuck with. No, I might send him a DM if it's appropriate, but it's not appropriate. Sit down and shut the fuck up. That's hierarchy. Sit down and shut the fuck up. You're welcome. That's trying to come on. He sent $10 tuition. And I want you guys all to know you're not my brother. I don't fuck with you. Don't call me brother. I don't fuck with you. If you're not one of the official saints, I don't fuck with you. If I ain't shook your hand, if you ain't a member, if if we ain't here, there's not familiar familiarity and loyalty, I don't fuck with you. 
In fact, let me tell you how much I don't fuck with people with no integrity. There was recently a guy who bought a, a pre-order on uh, PayPal for the backpack briefcase. And then he submitted a, a um, what do you call that? Oh, you wouldn't call, get into that scammer? No. Okay. Long story short, if somebody's a scammer, I don't mess with them. I will say, hey, man, I want to refund you any membership you ever had. I don't want to do business with you. You don't have integrity. Don't call me bro. You're not my brother. I don't know you. We don't share values. And my values, I don't contradict great leaders. I don't contradict people I associate with in public. You guys know there are some YouTubers. We have radically different philosophies. You will never hear me drag them through the dirt in public. Even some of them I personally don't like but we've done business together. I'm not going to drag them through the dirt in public. It's not manly. It's not appropriate. If you've done business with someone, if you have a, a basic level of respect, huh? and if you respect hierarchy, we're not, you're not my brother. You've not learned anything from me. Okay. Well, after that long comment about brother, so Kwame sent $10. So we're going to read his okay. comment. He said, Hey brother, oh, here we go again. I Bad agree day. with 99% of what you espouse. I disagree with some of what you say. I think that means lying. KS, not LS. Oh, I think he went on KS? I, yeah, but here's the thing, and I'm going to break y'all heart. He dead. He gone. He don't matter no more. He don't matter no more. And, and soon it'll be the same for some other YouTubers. So we're dealing with what's going on today. So, yeah, I will continue breaking your hearts with no regard. Carrying on. Okay. And, and by the way, 99%, if you agree with 99%, sit down and shut the fuck up on the 1%. That is some whole shit. You guys don't understand what masculinity is. Masculinity sometimes is holding in your emotions. Masculinity sometimes is knowing when to respect hierarchy. As a soldier, you need to soldier sometimes. Don't tell the general your opinion when the general ain't asked for your motherfucking opinion. Sometimes you need to hold that 1% in, sit down and shut the fuck up and soldier on. He said he's learned a lot from the He ain't learned the fuck enough. Because one thing I will tell you, you ain't never seen me speak against my old heads. I ain't never once disrespected or spoke against my old heads. I show my old heads they do respect. I got here not on accident. I got here by real toil, real hard work. And when I say here, I'm not talking about the south of France. You dig? I'm talking about metaphorically in a position of power coming from nothing. I've served people. I've not served lip service. I've not talked about schools that don't exist. I've taught in schools in Baltimore, Maryland, some of the worst schools in the world, taught all black kids and two Latino kids, zero white kids attended that shitty school. I taught kids in Philadelphia, in the gutter of Philadelphia, schools called Martin Luther King High School. Anytime a street is named Martin Luther King is gutter. You dig? I've served the people. I'm here for a reason. Don't you fucking disrespect your old hands. And to be honest with you, if you were in person, I hope one of my young boys slap your ass in the mouth and let you learn that lesson the hard way. And sometimes you just need to get slapped in your fucking mouth and just take it. Okay, Mark said, I just got off the phone with an older woman that said if I want her, I need to show it by paying for her hair, hair nails, etc. Any advice how to play this? Peace to the saints. Um, number one, have you smashed? If you haven't smashed, I'll go ahead and make sure I smash. I will record it for memories because her ass is history. Re let me rewind that. If you ain't smashed, go ahead and smash. Record it for memories because her ass is history. You're older. You have no fucking value in general. You did. Uh, number two, uh, pay for your hair, nails, etc. No, you bum bitch. You'd be able to demonstrate value in yourself by being able to pay for your own basic maintenance. Now, nah, kick her raggedy ass to the side. She's a real dirtbag. And let me guess, she's not white. Let me guess, she's not Asian. Why? Because white American European, uh, excuse me, white American women generally don't do shit like that. Uh, Asian women generally don't say ignorant shit like that. Western European women generally don't say stuff like that. She might be Slavic. She might be a, a, a Eastern European American. You heard me saying something like that might be African-American, might be some trailer park trash, low class white American woman. Yeah, that's a trashy thing to say. She's a dirt bag. Dog her out for all of us. Please dog her out. Dan is back and said, I asked the question if there was proof that's not contradicting you. Look, you're a dirt bag and you don't even know it. Let me help you out. This is feminine behavior. What you try to do is you ask questions to try to drive doubt. That is what 
people try to do to poke holes at leaders. At the end of the day, you're a fucking fangirl and you admire KS. There's nothing wrong with that. We all like who we like, right? There's nothing wrong with that. You're a fangirl. You admire KS. I said he's a dirtbag. And I always, I told him to his face, he's a dirtbag. I didn't have that conversation publicly. But when I met him, I said, hey, number one, I want to apologize for saying you guzzle Skittles because a lot of men follow you. And if you if you don't guzzle Skittles, I don't want them thinking you do and thinking that's a cool thing to do. I apologize for that. But everything else I said is a fee I issue to the gristle and don't ever show up in my city without banging my line first. Sir, yes, sir, was basically his response. He even said, here's my, my number to my penthouse. We can do a collab while I'm here. So I'm always holding consistent on what I say. He's a fucking dirtbag with no integrity. I am not surprised that he died of a drug overdose. You can call it hypertension. You can call it heart attack. People always use euphemisms instead of saying what it is, which is a goddamn drug overdose. I didn't sold dope. I didn't seen a lot of dope fiends. I got a lot of dope fiends in my family. I know a dope fiend when I see him. I know their habits and behaviors. And I also been a, a part of this, this high life when you got bread. And I know what that entails. If you don't have strong morals, you're going to fall to it. And I know he failed to it because he ain't have strong morals. No way in hell you live 50 years broke. And then all of a sudden you have the wherewithal to deal with the fast life when you become a millionaire. Suddenly, I got to ease in. And look, as I said, hierarchy, my boy, shut the fuck up and sit down somewhere. Okay, Craig sent cash out. He said tuition pays to the saints. Now, mind you, right now I'm wilding out on known fans. These are fans of mine. I'm still wilding out on them. I don't give a shit because what I have to teach you is greater than that. Sometimes you're in the house with your father and some of you might not have grew up with your father. Clearly, your father says something you don't agree with. Oh, you ain't going to speak up to your dad. You might get your ass whooped. Your father might be talking to your mother and you might be taking your mother's side, but you need to sit there and shut up and stay out of grown folks' business. Hierarchy. You caught up? Bum ass. We're going to get onto this work, though, these lessons, because I got to teach. I have to. Because these dumb bastards are so weak and feminine, they don't understand the masculine imperative to holding your emotions sometimes. How stupid are you? You're defending a dead man who cannot help you against somebody who's live, breathing, and virile. You heard me? You you defending him against the, the big homie. That's stupid. Back. He said, peace to the saints. I've learned a lot from you, brother, regardless of my disagreement. I'm not your brother. Stop it. Get that off the screen. Okay, none of the above said, gotta watch it back later, but tuition? Yeah, because I'm not going to keep playing with this um, sneak diss, with this like underhanded disrespect. I'm aggressive. You see, I want you guys to know I'm not passive aggressive, never have been. If you ever saw me in real life, if you want to try some weirdo shit, you're going to see like, damn, he looks like a nice guy. He's wearing smart glasses, might even be wearing a business suit, but he's not about to go for the weirdo shit. No, sir. I was not brought up that way. So if I'm going to be aggressive with somebody, I'm going to be straight up aggressive. I'm not going to be passive aggressive. Hey, do you have any evidence uh, Kevin Hart was or Kevin Samuels was a guy from cocaine overdose? Yeah, I said it. And I said it to anybody, period. And we just, you think he died from hypertension? And he was young. He's young and slim. Come on, man. Get out of here. Anyways. Joel said tuition. He said peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Shout out to the real ones. Shout out to the real ones. Now, let's go through a couple notes I have for the African-American male. Number one, one thing you hear African-American males use a lot, this term is very comical to me, is corny. I don't think I've ever seen an ethnic group call individuals corny so much. You have to ask yourself, what is the obsession with the African-American male with not being corny or being in their cool pose, metaphorically speaking? There's actually a book written a long time ago called Cool Pose. The African-American is so concerned, the male, so concerned with appearing cool because that's one of the few things that they can exercise a power over. You know, for example, you can wear your baseball cap forward or you can be cool and you can turn it around backward, the opposite of the way it's meant to be worn, the opposite of the way the white capitalist who invented baseball and invented baseball hats and owns the new era company, the opposite of how he intended you to wear it, you can turn it backward. Now you're cool. If you wear it forward, you're corny. 
Yeah, you're corny. If you wear your pants where they're supposed to be, you're corny. If you hang them off your butt, you're cool. Why is the African-American concerned with being cool and not corny? Um, because it's the only thing their broke asses have control over. It costs you zero dollars to turn your hat from back uh, forward to backward. It costs you zero dollars to hang your pants down below your, your waist to make some sort of an idiotic fashion statement. You're so damn concerned with looking cool and sounding cool that you refuse to speak the mainstream English that's going to get you a job. You refuse to speak the mainstream English because you want to sound cool and have swag. Oh, I got swag. Then the African-American female is so brain dead. Then you got a whole legion of lower class white women and fat white women. It's not the good looking, attractive, intelligent, middle class or better white women that want to deal with average black guys. It's the jailbird white girl, the white girl missing teeth, the white girl who ate too many cupcakes, the white girl who is completely rejected from her own kind, meaning white guys won't deal with her that white girl is the one who chases for bbc's and she likes black guys because they have swag wow yeah swag is what we need i'm gonna pay for my admission onto the public bus using swag i'm gonna pay for my dinner using swag wow that's pathetic that's why they're so concerned about not being corny because their coolness is the only thing they've had control over because it has nothing to do with integrity, nothing to do with having some goddamn money, which is critical to survival, nothing to do with having power because black males rarely have power, not even over their own goddamn self because a good majority of them are involved in the penal system, whether they're currently incarcerated or they're previous, uh, previously convicted or connected to the penal system. 34% of African-American males are connected to the pre, uh, penal system. Ex-offenders, you might call them. But they're concerned with who's corny and who's not corny, because that's an important measure of success on the planet Earth. Go ahead. Karma has quit every street getting better and better. With my busy lifestyle, you're the only one I make it a priority to listen to. Peace to the saints. I appreciate that. And the reason I care nothing for these casual ass fans who don't respect the boss enough to say, sir, yes, sir. I might not agree with 100%, but God damn it, if I agree with 99%, that is a whole lot higher percent of any other person in this era trying to do good works. What kind of a fucking feminine... They about to send me over to Edge Bridge. They sending me over. What kind of feminine being are you? When you say, I don't agree with 100% of what you say, so I'm going to speak up and try to deride your message and your position. Wow, you're a crab in a bucket. But what we're, what we're not going to do is we're not going to scratch with you. We're going to eventually eliminate you in a real way. I am the warrior king. We're eventually going to eliminate you. Now, uh, carrying on. Nations that Marquette is smart, the only person that's pointing this out, I got to book a session, I'm inspired to win. In a real way. And Kevin's intuition on Cash App. Um, oh, we got a we got a, a tough guy in the comments named uh, John Henrik. He writes, "Imagine me checking in with this fraud. I wish I would. I box Southpaw clown. Oh, that's how you know you're a fruitcake. Because look, you're talking about your your boxing stance. That's cute, my boy. That's really cute. Um, but I put in work. You heard me. I've been off the porch." If you ever disrespected me in public, we wouldn't be boxing. You heard me? You ever turned up in Saint City and disrespected me face to face? I swear to God, we wouldn't be boxing. You's a sucker. And that's how I can already tell that because the way you're talking. You don't talk like a real one. You ain't a goon, boy. And, and let me let you come on, on camera since you's a tough guy. Um, put pop up his comment on the screen. I want people to see I see this softy. And also, while we're talking about corniness and tough guys. Let me also address some idiocy in the um, the African American culture. You see, yeah, in, in John Henrik, <laughs> let me get that link for you, Softy. Get that link for you, Softy. Here we go. There's that link for you, Softy. There we go. There's that link for you, Softy. But here, check this out. And by the way, people, I'm outside. There's no other YouTuber that travels like I travel. Just look at my YouTube videos. They all got a different background. Look at my IG. I'm everywhere like air. I'm in every place like space. You dig? Yeah. You can find me. You can ask people who've been through Saint City. They'd be walking through the 
through uh, certain spots. They see me in the restaurant. You heard me? Yeah, I'm outside. So while we're waiting for John, um, Bernard sent a cash out. He said, I want smoke more. What? Okay, cool. What, what smoke you want? Say what it is. Look, check this out, little buddy. If you want real smoke, I live in one of the easiest places in the world to fly to. I live in Las Vegas, Saint City, one of the easiest places in the world to fly to. We could get it in person. If it's really real, don't even come on camera. You hear me? If it's really real, don't even come on camera. Just come to St. City. I ain't never heard from nobody in my whole life. No, my whole the, life. The title must be triggering these It males. is, and it's only ignorant African-American dirtbags, and that's why I'm about to roast every last one of them because they're ignorant. There's another one that looks like he wants it. What? He writes the title must be triggered. What, what? That one that you're over right now. Oh, well, we put the link in the description. They scared to come. They see what I do to them. They scared to come. Um, anyway, since these guys are scared, I'm going to carry on with the lecture. Oh, here we go. Why they never come with a real name? Put your face on the camera, little buddy. Put your face on the camera. I'll add you to the stream. A lot of these guys are homosexuals, though. They, they end up putting their private parts on. Why don't you have your real name on? Uh, my name is Joshua. How you doing, sir? Are you on here for smoke? No, um, I wouldn't say smoke. I would just like to give you alternate perspective. I'm not here for alternate perspectives. I'm, I'm not here to be educated by you. I'm not here for alternate perspectives. We're, we're here for smoke. I feel like I've been very clear in that. So I'm going to pull you out because we're not here to play patty cake with anybody. We're here for, for smoke. But I appreciate you being respectful. It's been a pleasure Thank to make you. your acquaintance. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Hey, bro. Wait, don't call me bro. First off, put your real name. Put your All right, my name, name. my name is Justin. Justin who? Justin. Winner. That's all. I just, I just, I just want no, to say, like. Wait, hold on, hold bro, on. Hold on. Just, hold on. No, no. Don't yeah. just say shit. All right. Are you here for smoke? A little bit. Yeah, guaranteed. Okay, good, good. Now, guaranteed. first off, I go by my real name. You hear Definitely. me? I go by my real name. Uh-huh. Or Quet Devon Burton. Definitely. What's your real name? My name is Justin Wilson, if you really want to know. Justin Guaranteed. Wilson. Where you? I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh -huh. Where do you live? I lived there for 10 years. I live in so where do you LA live? now. I live where do in you LA. live? Guaranteed. Where, LA. Where in LA do you uh -huh. live? Carson. Carson, California. Okay, you live in Carson. Fantastic. Guaranteed. Now, what's happening? All right, look. I just, you know, you kind of threw me off because, you know what I mean? I, I tapped into your live the other day. Yeah. And you was laying on your back in uh doing your live, bro. Like it threw me off, my nigga. And it was just like I lost a lot of a lot of gumption for you. You, you get them things, it was good. Look real like feminine, bro. I could only tap man for one minute. I had to get off. Real quick, like let it let us know what you're talking about when you say laying on my back. I'm not sure what you're You was laying on your back like this on your live, bro. And it it just it just rubbed me the wrong way, sir. Like real quick, you like, are saying? you talking about like I was in bed? You was in bed, bro. I, okay. I, it, just, it just looked super feminine to me, bro. Cool, and it's just, cool. I, I lost a little, I lost a little for you, man. You cool. know, like, let, honestly, now let's chop it up. Let's chop it up about I respect, that. I respect the game that you spit. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't go into some but other that, stuff. Let's talk about that. Completely, sir. Hold on one second. Let's talk about that first part before we go into something else, real quick. Jeremy, like, let's let's not go into 30 different things. All right, so I'll, first I'll stay off, on the subject, though, but guarantee, let's go. Yeah, yeah, let's first off. Real quick, do you think I need your respect? I don't care. No, do you think I need your respect? That's not what I think about, sir. That's Got not you. a good question to now, ask. Number two, number I don't two. Think about that. Number two, who the fuck are you for your respect to mean anything to the big I'm homies? saying, I'm saying you lost me. That's all I'm saying. Look. Trip it's on not this, about Justin, respect. You're turning it into a respect thing. You lost hold me on, with player. what you were. Now, hold on, player. I'm going to respond to you. Listen real quick. You're here to learn. But you didn't look masculine. <laughs> this motherfucker, look. You didn't look masculine. Be That's silent what I'm so saying. You can learn something. You babbling like a broad. Be silent. You already spoke. Guaranteed. Go ahead. Go speak. I'm going to respond to you. Number one, this is the kind of whole ass thinking I'm glad you brought forward so I mm -hmm. can clarify that you didn't get the shit. First off, you said I didn't look masculine. Bro, you were in the bed, my nigga. Come on, man. First off, I'm not your nigga, You don't talk bro. to men in the bed like I'm that, sir. Your, I'm not your nigga, bro. All right, well, sir, you don't talk yeah, to I'm men while you're laying. 
don't don't confuse yourself little buddy because first off i could tell you not a real wolf and i could tell you not from la because here here's here's what happened when somebody from la say where you from your bitch ass is over here talking about i'm from la and then i say we're in la see if you was a real live one from la when i said where you from you would have said i'm from la west side denver lane you would have let me know where you from but you's a bitch ass nigga because anybody from la when somebody say where you from you say where you from but you's a hoe so that's off rip and everybody saw it i had to ask your ass four times no where are you really from because you could be from different parts of L.A. You could be from the jungles. You could be from Denver Lanes. You could be from a lot of places. But you's a hoe. And you were scared to say where you from. Probably because you don't want me to have make a phone call. Because I might know somebody where you from. And check on your bitch ass. That's number one. Number two, you over here talking about, yeah, bro, I tuned into your live stream and you was in bed. I'm in bed right now, little buddy. I'm in bed right now, little buddy. Cause it's in the middle of the night of south of france and let me tell you something you're so stupid that you look at me doing a live session from the bed and say that's feminine well okay that's feminine but you the same guy that'll walk around your neighborhood and see guys sagging their pants but you don't never walk up to them and say that's feminine hmm i wonder why you don't know what's feminine this is stupidity do men not lay in beds? That's completely dumb what you're talking about. You say it's feminine. What you don't understand is I'm working around the clock on different time zones. I do it at my convenience. If you have the convenience to sit in your goddamn bed, kick out game, school a nation of a world of young people and make a dollar all at the same damn time, you'd be wise to do that. You'd be wise to do that. And if you ever work this goddamn hard, you might sit in the bed and do it. To say it's feminine is idiotic. Feminine. This word roots from the traits that are inherent to the female. More preponderant in the female. Are females more likely to do a live session in bed? Probably not. You sound like a goddamn idiot. What you really are is you're a hater. And you're trying to look to see anything you can hate on. Why? Because you're my inferior in every fucking way. You's a fat bitch ass nigga. Real talk. I know you's a bitch because when I say where you from, you start fucking babbling. You ask me where I'm from, I'm going to tell your bitch ass where I'm from off the rip. And to be honest with you, if we is face to face and you ask me where I'm from, I might just sock your bitch ass out because nine out of nine, it's not a friendly thing to ask somebody where they from. Pussy ass nigga. You ain't no L.A. nigga, you bitch ass nigga. You wasn't born and raised in L.A., I bet my life. Because a real one ain't going to be double talking when somebody say where you from. Let me make this prediction. I'm predicting for the whole audience he was not born and raised in L.A. Because we do not do whole shit like that. Watch. Hey, what you talking about? Where were you born I and didn't raised? I gang bang. I never hey, had little homie, bang, where son. were you born and raised? Where were you born Delamo, and raised? nigga. Since you want to go there, Delamo, where, where you, nigga. Where? Delamo, born and raised, nigga. You I can't even see because I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Now, Delamo, check this out. nigga. What, what the check fuck? Check this out, little ho. Let's go, check sir. Check this out. Let me you want to go there? You want to whole... fall back on your PDL? Because you ain't. Hey, let me bet my whole. Let me bet all the money in my pocket. You're fucking fat. You're fucking fat. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Show us your gut, you fat fuck. Oh. Shit, Gus, sir. What you at work? Look at this fat motherfuckers at work. You at work right now? You working, man? This motherfucker on his lunch break right now talking shit to a boss. Holy shit. This man is on his lunch break talking shit to a boss. Oh, but I'm the boss around here, too? What you talking about? How the fuck you a boss wearing some motherfucking working khaki ass... Nigga, you wearing dickies right now. You at work. What you working in a fucking They're factory? They're not dickies, sir. Again, that's you with no swag, bro. You're not working, you working in a factory? You don't, even know, you don't even know. This nigga got his shit buttoned all the way up to the top. Yo ass about to walk back into a factory. What you're the lying, fuck? You sir. Again, you, you don't even bump. know what you're talking about. You, the bump. you should Again, be here you just don't even know what you're talking about, big dog. You should be you here don't know what you're talking about. That's what I'm saying. You look Show stupid. Me this. Why are you and at you look homosexual the other day. That's why I'm calling in. Because I needed to I needed to inform you. Real you quick. look are weird, you bro. Work? Your presentation matters, I'm sir. Not. Are you at work? Are you Guaranteed at work? I am. Wow. <laughs> You're a fucking clown, boy. Let me tell you why. 
There's no way a nine to five ass working motherfucker calls up a boss when he's sitting in the south of France in a motherfucking plush robe with some Pradas on talking my shit. Use a working boy. You need to learn how to get up on this level before you converse with me because you's a bum ass nigga. You heard me? You ain't on my level. We shouldn't even be having conversations. I should let you bring your raggedy ass in here and sweep up even though I don't need a sweep up. I should make your ass sweep up just to do it, you little bitch ass nigga. Here, check this out. Check this out. Smoothly as well. Check this out. Guaranteed. Why are you at work with a gold grill in? You're you're a despicable because character. I run shit, sir. This is called this is called. No, you know who runs shit. Your boss I, I runs shit. I want to. You're an employee. You don't run shit, but your mouth. Your boss runs shit, and you run your mouth too long. Your boss gonna bust out that back door right there and tell your ass to get back on the clock. You dirt ball nigga. It's always you broke niggas. And that's why I did this live stream because you motherfuckers are terrible and despicable. You're living in a fantasy, boy. I'm in the south of France. Yo ass is outside of a factory sitting in some raggedy ass Ben Davis jeans with a dirt ball ass shave wearing a gold grill because you're not customer facing. You're lifting boxes and shit. Because if you was facing customers, you'd be doing something else. Use a box lifting nigga. How you got the nerve? Bro, what do you do for a living? You're a I'm boss. Doing what do you exactly do for a living? What you're saying I'm not doing, sir. I'm you're facing boss. What do you do for what a living? What are you talking about? I sell goods, sir. Time out. Guaranteed. You're a boss. What do you do for a living? Guaranteed. I sell goods, sir. Wait, what goods do you sell, my boy? Bro, it don't matter the industry. My nigga just oh, understand. It don't matter. There's an it industry, don't matter. my nigga. First off, it don't matter is not proper. When you speak to me, you speak in proper. You speak in the Queen's English, you little dumb fuck. Number one, it does matter. It matters when you're on here talking to me and I'm in the south of France and you're sitting outside your job. That's how despicable you guys are, is that you're so fucking delusional. You're at work claiming you're a boss when you're on a lunch break. When the last, nigga, I don't even know what a lunch break is about. I give lunch breaks. I let people go on lunch breaks. And people like you, I call back early off their lunch break. This nigga got to ask permission to go on vacation. He talking to me. This shit crazy. This shit crazy. This shit crazy. You you need some smoke too? You you need some smoke? Oh yeah, mom, you hear me? Yes or no? Do you need some smoke? Yeah, you hear me? God damn. He's the one that sent the super chat saying he wants smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you hear me? I'm I'm I want some smoke, yeah. Why are you guys always so dumb? I'm just curious. Like, why why do you think with your low IQ you're about to say something profound? Why? why? I'm not saying anything, I'm not saying anything, I'm not saying I'm gonna say anything profound. I'm just saying that you I'm have gonna a stuttering care. problem. Re don't repeat things. Just say what you're going to say, my boy. Look, I'm on. I'm going live very often. I'm a very private, insular person. So I it takes. Well, me then why are you here? Yeah. Because I want to smoke with you because I think you're on some bitch shit. It's uh, it's easy to attack a black man in America. That's the easiest thing you can oh do. Oh my goodness! The hardest thing is attack the white man or attack any other minority group. It's easy. Like, but I like, compare you to a nigga like Tariq who like who go in on the white supremacists. Like, now you're crying like a bitch. What are you crying for? What what what's what to cry about? Is that funny? You control like a bitch because you don't have an argument. Where's the argument now? Wow. It's easy to attack niggas all day. That's what niggas in the hood do. You go, you shoot each other up and attack each other. That's easy. We do it all day. But you can't wow. attack the white man. You can't attack the wow. white man. Bitch. Let, me, let me educate you, young man. Your name is Bernard Wills. Yeah. You're about to benefit from this. I'm glad you called in, young man. Listen closely. You, my dear boy, you live at such a low level, you don't understand the world. Let me tell you. First off, I don't have any need to attack the white man, the black man, or any man. I only have the need to take what I want. Whoever's holding what I want will receive a sword. Black, blue, man, woman, young, old, they will receive a sword if they have what I want. Now, let me tell you about the high level of black excellence, which you clearly know nothing about, my dear boy. And you wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know my Tyler. background. You no, I do know your background. background. I, I'll tell you why I know your background, because look at where you're fucking living. I know you. I know enough about your background. Look where you're fucking living. That's number one. What's wrong where I'm living at? What, what, you're broke. And then number at? two. Where am I living at? Where am I living at? You're emotional. I pay you don't even know all that. You don't even know all that. You don't even know that. You don't know nothing. Young man, you don't have to cry. Just, just listen. You don't have to get emotional. Just listen. We'll come. I'm here to educate. Don't mute my mic. Don't mute my mic. Don't, don't, don't. That's because you're babbling, and you, and you're, you're 
mute them when I mute them. No, firstly, you don't even know where I live mute at. Them. I'm living in the. Calm down, my boy. I'm I live in a good you. neighborhood. I pay my mute them again. I, <laughs> I don't have to mute you anymore. I got somebody to mute you. I don't even have to mute you, my boy. I don't even lift a finger out here. Look, no hands, mom. No hands, mom. <laughs> See, he's emotional. This is actually on my notes. Look, look, it's right here. I swear to, I, I kid you not. Bro, I'm you're, having you're fun. I'm emotional. I'm having look, fun. It says emotional aggressiveness. You're on my notes. I made notes about you. I made notes. I knew you would behave like this because you're a typical stereotypical, uh, you're stereotypical African-American male, which means you're emotionally aggressive. You're not strategically aggressive. You're emotionally aggressive, which means you did not make a rational decision to be aggressive. Your emotions have compelled you to be aggressive, and that's your problem. This is how you, you guys end up in jail because you are you can't control yourself. You lash out because you're raised by your single mom. You weren't given enough game, so you don't have the masculine force to be strategic. So you just lash out, and you commit a violent crime, and you end up in prison. And then when you get out of prison, you kind of screwed yourself over. Now you struggle in the job market. And then you're going to end up living with a fat white girl who's going to pay all your bills for a time. Then eventually she's going to be like, Tyrone, you don't never pay any bills and you don't take care of your kids, Tyrone. And then she's going to kick you out. And then you're going to end up homeless on Skid Row. This is your life projection. I'm trying to help you. So be silent. And first, let me tell you about some things you don't know about. Thank you for your patience. Now, Tyrone, number one, you talk about white supremacy. You live at such a low level, you don't even really experience white supremacy because your number one struggle is not against the white supremacist. It's against your own laziness, stupidity, and emotionalism. I will tell you about white supremacy. In my case, I went to the University of California, Berkeley. It's less than 1% black. If you take a subsection of that for black males, it's less than half a percent black males. Now we're dealing with supremacy. We're dealing with white supremacy, Asian supremacy, stereotypes that say Asians are the smartest, stereotypes that say white people deserve to, to be here. I'm operating and representing you. I am black excellence. You dig? You need to show respect to me because I went before those who were competing at the highest levels and I was the only black man there and I represented us well at the high level. Then I went on to Johns Hopkins, which has even less black people and I'm a distinguished alumnus. So when you look at their website, you see me. When you look at their list of great graduates, you see a black face. That's called black excellence. Now, let me teach you a little bit more, young man. Then I founded a tech company. I invented a technology. There are none like us in that industry. And I took that company around the world, young man. I am black excellence. When I created a tech company and competed at the high level, who did I compete with? Did I compete with little dirtball black guys like you? No. I competed with elite Asians, elite whites. That's when you're really battling supremacy and they're trying to take us out. Huh? That's the high level. You don't understand that level. And guess what? When I do work at that level, I'm the one who makes opportunity for little guys like you who might be able to do something. Why? Because they say, you know what? I've met a black guy who's a genius. They exist. I've met a black guy who's timely and reliable and sharp and has first class manners and sophistication. They exist. But you, my boy, you're the ones who talk about white supremacy. You've never confronted white supremacy because you complain. You can't complain away white supremacy when you're like me. And you can go and outperform a Asian person and a white person. That is bringing us forward. You're just a dirtball little dirty black guy who's delusional. And you love to hear people complain about white supremacy because that's your explanation of why you're a loser. And you, my friend, are a loser, period. That's why you love racism, because it's your explanation of why you're a loser. Bro, can I talk now? You're not my bro. You're my inferior. More quit Devon Burton. Am I allowed to speak? See, you know my whole name because I'm the big homie and your name does not matter. You will, you will die nameless. Your children will, if you ever get any, your children will die having a father who was a nobody. 
Bro, but like the whole time you was talking, like you, Shut up. you I'm not your bro. bro. Don't start you your sentence on me, bro. I'm not, I'm not saying that in the sense of bro. You know that. I, you know you're no, not. I don't bro. know you, <laughs> and I don't know that. If you're gonna speak, you're gonna speak properly. But that's another I'm nigga to me. Bro. But, but, but I was calling. You. No, don't call me bro. Fix your English. I'm not your bro. Address me properly and speak. You're too stupid. Let me tell you, this is the problem with African Americans. You're so damn brain dead, you can't even speak without slang. How stupid are you? You can't even speak without using the word bro. You can't speak without repeating your sentences. You can't speak without stuttering. That is a psychological disposition you need to deal with. How could you come and try to debate me when you barely speak English? You're arrogant, son. Now speak to me without using colloquialism and calling me bro so that if, major if, you have something relevant to say, we can all comprehend it. Well, if I must speak sophisticated as to appease your sensibilities, as if I'm talking to a white man, because that is precisely what you are, a white man in black skin who goes out of his way to coon very aggressively in in favor of you know those you want to appease and it's it's funny how you go on a stream you 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 uh you go on why a stream do you keep right? repeating yourself just say what you gotta say because i'm using the sophistication of language that you want me to use so i won't be muted and so and, and as well as you can't you, speak I, english where did you grow up you had your three minute rant Where about you, you had your three minute rant about you can't even let me how am i like you, you you're talking over me like a bitch like a black woman right now you're talking over me like a bitch but uh, but but i'm dragging a black woman through the dirt god damn i'm not i'm not but i'm on I'm, I'm some type shit it could be any woman but you be like but like do you, you won't even let me like speak on some shit which is like i i sat there silently for three minutes because i'm that type of person i'm a listener I'll sit there and I'll let people go on and drag say, on. Bro. It's just, it's hard what? to listen to you because you're inarticulate. It's hard to listen to people who are inarticulate. But, but, but the thing is, I went to, I went to college to have a white collar job. You know what I mean? I've, written, I've done dissertations. I've done essays. You know, I mean, you can call me inarticulate, but I feel like that. I'm I'm not going to subscribe to that notion. Just as like, just like you you because you I go through what you go through. You think I'm just another stereotypical black male, but you have no idea about my background or my reality or what I've been through. And okay, so without, what's your point? What's your without, point? Without, without even having like, uh, without even you just see my face, you just see this dark skin, and you have all these assumptions about what? my background and who you think I what's am. And what are you trying to say? Intellect. What I'm saying is is that. You know, I am an intelligent black man. I I do come from black excellency. I do come from a good home. I do make money for myself. I do invest. Okay. I do I, I do travel internationally. I've That's done good. all That's these good. things. And sure. and and but I'm not so um elitist that I can't go politic with the black people who are not as sophisticated as I am. And that's what I think what what you're doing is dangerous, you know. I I even though I grew up in um in one sentence, what's, your, what's your point in one sentence in one sentence what are you trying to tell me like what are you trying to tell me in one sentence um don't dissociate yourself from other african americans because of your perceived inferiority complex because the white society doesn't see it the same way we're all still niggers in their eyes and just because they give you a couple of kisses on the cheek that does not make you one of them you're still one of us and the more you try to run away from that fact the more the more you the, the more you try to run away from who you are okay. the more you're just going to screw yourself and isolate yourself and then when, you. and when now, you're old and real niggas don't fuck okay. with you yeah. I, I asked you one sentence and you just kept fucking going on. Calm your dumb ass down. It's annoying, bro. I just asked you for one sentence. Do you know what a sentence is? God damn. Number one, I'm going to unmute you, but just calm the hell down. Now, I'm going to tell you what I understand that you just said, okay? Just to make sure that I am trying to understand you. Your claim is that I should not disassociate from African Americans, is that one part of your claim? Yes or no? Yes. I mean, you can. But God damn it. I just asked you yes or no. Shut the fuck up now. Yeah, God yeah, damn. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to make sure I understand what you said, bro. God damn. 
Don't disassociate from African Americans. Got it. Your second, your second position, you're positing the white society will not accept me as one of their own. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Do I understand your position? Yes. Good. Thank you. Fuck. Okay. Now, here's the funny thing about guys like you. You're, you view yourself in such a low way that when someone rises up, you try to pull them down back to where you are. That's, no. that's sad. That's no. sad, number one. No. Number two, you don't realize that within the diversity of every ethnic group, every racial group, no one is fully accepted. For example, among the African-American, you have African-American Muslims uh, who are Sunni Islam. You have African-Americans who follow Nation of Islam under the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You have African-Americans who are atheists. You have so much diversity within the African-American culture that African-Americans don't get along with each other. You understand? So there is no African-American collective which you're suggesting exists. That's not a real thing. Number one. So you're lying there. There's no cohesive culture. And I can explain briefly to you why that is. It started in the 1960s with integration. We can talk on that another time. That's number one. Number two, when you talk about identifying with whites, I don't identify with whites. That would be foolish. I identify with hustlers. I identify with people who share my values. And my values are publicly stated in public information. I'm actually creating a global movement. You did. So I identify with those who are saintly. And lastly, let me tell you how fucking goofy you are. And these are this is why I hate people like you in particular. You want to say in, ignorant things like, don't disassociate with the African-American. You grew up in the suburbs, right? Yeah. Thank you. You're a bitch ass nigga. You grew up in the suburbs. You're going to look at somebody like me and say, don't disassociate with the African-American. Number one, I grew up in the gutter. I could never disassociate with people I grew up with. Number one. Number two, if you check my background, you little dirt bag. I taught in Baltimore City. I taught all black kids. I taught in Philadelphia. I taught all black kids. When you see the nonprofit I ran, it supported all black families. Furthermore, little dirt bag boy. When you watch my conferences, my conferences are 80% plus young black men, a.k.a. foundational black Americans, a.k.a. African Americans, a.k.a. you're a motherfucking liar. And here's what I hate about people like you. You watch somebody like me who is doing the deeds. You check my background. It's all deeds. Know a man by his works. But then you'll follow a Tariq Nasheed who's building a museum. Is a museum what niggas need? I'm not done. Shut up. I'm not done. What have you done? Shut up, I'm not done. Or then you look at a Dr. Umar you Johnson. You don't talk shit. You don't have no films, nigga. Mute him. Mute him. Or then you look at a Dr. Yeah. Umar Johnson who's building a Bad school argument. that never came into fruition. Bad Are imaginary schools with niggas need? One of your mini. <laughs> One of your mini. I'm doing the works. What you're saying is complete idiocy. The reason that you're mad at a guy like me is because you are still in your own way. White supremacists are not limiting you. Your mindset is limiting you, period. I'm mindset cool. Thing. I ain't mad. Before, I'm feeling Before you talk to a man like me of my caliber and my, my status, you should first figure out how to speak English, number one. And the reason I tell you that, you don't even feel comfortable speaking the language that is your first language. Now, since you're a Pan-Africanist, which is funny because you've never been to Africa, I'm guessing, I've been, I have, I have, I've been, I've been to Ghana, I've been to Egypt, I've been to Zimbabwe. This is funny. Calm Get down, my boy. We'll, we'll let you talk. Calm down. We'll let you talk. Just give me a moment. Give me a moment, little dirtbag. So you, my boy, you don't speak English, even though, were you born in America? This is a yes or no question. Were you born in America? Yes. Thank you. You're born in America, so English is your first language. You purport to be intelligent, yet you can't master a language that is your mother tongue. That suggests to me that you have low IQ or you have poor schooling, which is a pity because you said yeah, you grew up in the suburbs, yeah, and suburbs yeah, generally have good schools. I wouldn't know. I didn't grow up in the burbs, you fucking nerd. Yeah, now, I'm going to give you a chance to talk. Just be yeah, calm, my boy. Just be calm. Just be calm. Never ever to my kid.
Why is Mary eyes Mary. opening up so goddamn wide? This boy gonna have a goddamn hypertension death, like Kevin Sanders. Mm-hmm. Calm down, my no, boy. No, he, no, he, one second. He's, he's angry. He's angry. Calm down. Why he's yelling? Why is he so angry? Calm down, my boy. Now, you got to keep muting this motherfucker. He won't calm down. <laughs> As I was saying, on the point of English. Dude, I'm 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 I can't. Down. Let me see. Let me see. We're gonna have to pull you out of the call in a second. We're gonna have to pull you out of the call in a second because you're too emotional. Hey, nigga, fuck. Let me speak. We're gonna have to pull you out. You're too emotional. Just calm down. Just calm down for a second. (laughs) God, these. Oh my. He he lashed out. He lashed out. All right, we're gonna pull him out the call. He's too emotional. God damn. He's too emotional. I'm sorry. He's too emotional. Oh my goodness. Man, and, and look, uh, all they telling you is chill out. It looked like a female telling him to chill out. A female telling a grown man to chill out. He down bad. Let me tell you guys what I was trying to explain to this dimwit. Number one, you're born in America. Your mother tongue is English. You cannot claim to be intelligent when you don't speak the mother tongue, which is English. Furthermore, you pretend as though to be African American is to speak broken English. We did not create broken English. Broken English, or as you would call it wrongfully, wrongly, the African American vernacular, this is a bastardized form of English that results directly for, from the white enslaver denying you education. And so you speak the broken tongue of the Southern whites who were rural peoples who also got poor education. And so to adopt a broken form of English, which you might call Ebonics or some other name, to adopt that as your own speaks poorly of yourself. I'd respect you if you said, hey, Marquette, English was my first language, so I'm fluent in it. And similar to my brothers on the African continent, since you believe you're all brothers, I also have picked up some Swahili in university, which is an African tongue. Or maybe I've picked up some Amharic or Tigrinya or a language that real Africans speak. But our people do not speak Ebonics. That's not a real language, my dear boy. And so you look like a fucking fool when you come on and try to talk to a wordsmith and you can't even speak English. And also you can't speak without stuttering and you can't speak without repeating yourself. I mean, you're a poor representation of any position. Pathetic. Catch me up. Okay, we have... Agent said, the game is always told, never sold. Suckers don't want no smoke. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. He came right back and said the same thing. <laughs> In a real way. He meant it. You heard me? Nate said, Saint, you read my mind with this one. I'm 22. It bothers me to see so many black males with baby mama drama, but peace to the saints. And homie was acting like my baby mama. You heard me? I ain't even got a baby mama, but I seen how they behave. He was so lit, like he my baby mama, old child support, and I ain't showed up on Christmas. Told the kids I'd be there on Christmas with gifts, and I ain't even pulled up. Dallas said these haters can't even see greatness right in front of them. Shout out to Mark Quet for doing a 5.30 a.m. consultation with me the other day, in bed, delivering quality game to help me achieve my goals. In a real way. Um, is This is a... Some imbecile in the chat writes, did you call your students little dirtbags? No, what are you talking about? This is how lies get spread. So th- this is a uh, really silly, really silly and sad. Jason said, Saint, how would you deal with a family member that's always needing to borrow money? Would you cut ties? Hell yeah. Next. Robert said, cry me a river. Bruh, my boy was, was so hurt and emotional. It's a pity. He even said, shaking my head, he making us black folks look bad, can't even talk. Right. And the, the worst part about it is they they live on lies. That's the, that when I talk about the black African-American male has no integrity. How can you look at a guy like me? Most of my work, especially if you're talking about my charitable work, has been with black people exclusively. And more importantly, never do you find a guy who comes on here and talks about my work. And he says, well, Marquette. Here's your work. Here's my work. They haven't done anything. They're just, they're sophists. They're babblers. They've not done anything in the real world. You could come on here and call me a white guy in black skin, but what about all them black kids who tell you Marquette Devon Burton was my teacher in fifth grade, my teacher in sixth grade, changed my whole life? What about kids in Philly who say Marquette Devon Burton was my teacher in 11th grade and the 12th grade, changed my whole life? What about kids who tell you Marquette Devon Bird created a nonprofit, did wraparound services? He knows my mother. He knows my father that I don't even know. Huh? 
He knows all my siblings. He been to my house. He got me into college. He got our electricity turned back on when my goddamn daddy ain't have the decency to keep it on. Marquette Devon Burton got my electricity turned on. What about them black families in Baltimore who say, I met Marquette Devon Burton when I saw him at Union Baptist Church. When I saw him lecturing at a Baptist church, even though he ain't a Baptist preacher and ain't even a Christian like that. But he was talking that talk and he showed up every Saturday and Sunday to teach computer skills to poor black kids in Baltimore. What are we talking about here? I'm the genuine article. There's nothing that can be said about me. And in fact, there's kids in Baltimore and Philly that'll come at your neck if you mention me, boy, because they owe their life to me. Literal, they literally say, Marquette got me off the streets. Real hitters to slap your helmet off, you nerd. Go ahead. Preach Church Tabernacle. And on Cash App, we have Sev, Sev Tuition, Peace of the Saints, XFO. I think that's his name on YouTube. Let's go. Johnny sent tuition on Cash App. Bam said, Peace of the Saints. Thanks for the representation. Marquette, KP Pushin. Okay. Sure. Hey, guys, check this out. Look, hey, 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 homie, I want to know this. What are your works? You're, you're, you're trying to question what I've done, which is a public information. What have you done for black people? What link? Give me a link I can pull up or give me some photos I could pull up just to see some evidence of what you've done for black people. You big mouth bastard. Look, I, I ran a family restaurant and we hired black people. What? You're a piece of trash. Hold on one second, little middle class that. boy. You're a piece of trash. This middle class piece of trash said I ran a family restaurant. So basically your parents were successful and you came and piggybacked off of their stuff and said we hired black people. Wow. No, let me ask you, what did you do for black people that made you zero dollars? I just pointed out one thing I did for black people that made me zero dollars. I found a nonprofit for black boys. I worked every weekend on my spare time unpaid and taught computer skills to black children. What have you done for black people unpaid, you dirt bag? Um, honestly, I help my immediate family and my extended family, but I can't. I, I, you I, want, I, you I, piece of trash. You piece of trash. I swear to God, you're the type of guy that if I could execute you, I would. If I could execute you and get away with it, I would. Because you misrepresent us. Let me tell you the kind of piece of trash you are. You have the goddamn audacity to come on here and talk about me, someone who has slaved without pay for my people, one who has given people the opportunity to make an income so they can stay out of jail and stay out of the streets. And you dirtbag piece of trash, you've never done anything for anybody. You selfish, self-righteous piece of dog shit. You disgust me. You are a fucking coffee shop revolutionary. You one of them dumb motherfuckers that say shit but ain't done shit. You the worst kind of black guy. You the one we all talk about. The one that don't take care of their kids. The one that don't do shit and just got complaints. Talking about, I done helped out my immediate friends and family. Motherfucker, everybody does that. I'm talking about what have you done for a black stranger who needed you, who had nothing. You dumb bad, you dumb fuck motherfucker. You need to read my book and figure out what a real fucking man is. You read my book and figure out when I was in Baltimore City and I used to walk my ass to work in a public school when it was goddamn snowing and there was kids sitting outside and against the rules of that school, I let them motherfucking kids in that school early, an hour or two early so they didn't have to sit in the goddamn snow and got the whole fucking policy changed so these children who are black didn't have to sit in the goddamn snow. You dumb motherfucker, you don't match up to me. I should beat your ass for even coming on this live stream and try to act like you didn't did shit for my people. You not one of us. You the motherfucking piece of trash. I hate niggas like you. I hope you get hit by a bus in this motherfucker as soon as you walk outside your rat trap ass piece of shit apartment. The fuck out of here. This motherfucker made me wake up all these fucking neighbors. This the kind of N-I-G-G-E-R that I hate. These are the ones I'm wondering why weren't they hanging? How did his lineage survive? Probably survive because he's a goddamn bootlicker. 
He probably survived because he was the one who is not really trying to help us get free. This man, I said, well, what have you done? I help my friends and family. Don't all human beings help their friends and family? You're supposed to be a black revolutionary. We're the black people you help. Why you can't help black people unless you're getting a check cut, you piece of shit? Okay, Damien said, you have a lot of experience with public speaking. Any tips on how to slow down my speech and articulate properly without stuttering? This boy is disgusting. Boy is disgusting. Uh, and shout out to these middle class revolutionaries. Martin Luther King ass motherfucker. Ain't never been through nothing, but he somehow understand everything. The African American is an impoverished ethnic group. You find us in the urban centers, Detroit. You find us in Cleveland. You find us in parts of San Francisco. You find us in Oakland. You find us in Baltimore. You find us in Philadelphia. You do not find us in the suburbs. You did not have an African American experience. I wish I could have grew up middle class like yo ass, but how dare your middle class fucking silver spoon mouth having ass come on here and talk about what I need to be doing for black people when you ain't did shit. You disgust me. I hope somebody know where he stay or where he work out and slap his fucking helmet off. And as he lays there on the ground, you say peace to the saints. Uh, what was that question? It says, you have a lot of experience with public speaking. Any tips on how to slow down my speech and articulate properly without stuttering? Number one, when you come up to that podium, you first, you breathe in the audience. You take your time. You don't say a damn thing till you're ready to say something. When you give them that little bit of pause, it makes the audience more nervous than you are. That's number one. Number two, an amateur practices until they get it right. A professional practices until they can't get it wrong, which is to say that if you fail to prepare, you're preparing to fail. So you should have practiced that goddamn thing until it is completely memorized. And then you don't go and say it from memory. You say it from the spirit. You speak to the spirit of the message. You don't have to get every word exact and every word right. Because here's the thing. When you carry people away with the words of a speech, they don't even remember exactly what you said. They remember how you said it. They remember the cadence. They remember the conviction. And then they're going to have to play it back if they want to know exactly what you said. Practice before the audience is, is there and practice with them in your mind. But here's the key. When you've practiced enough, I promise you, audience don't matter. Audience could be 10 billion. It could be 10 persons. It could be 10,000. You know what you're going to do. Huh? Hey, Monkey said the nerve of that caller. <laughs> Monkey said the nerve of that caller. I said, what have you done for black people? This mf -er said. Well, my family had a black owned restaurant, a family owned restaurant, and we hired black people. Wow. Wow, my boy. By that logic, any white person can say, I help black people too because I gave them a job. <laughs> what kind of stupidity? Um, apparently, there's more people that want the link. Someone told me to do my damn job and drop the link. That's not my job. Right, right. Your job is what I say it is. So, Barrett said, You all got. Shifu started, man. Good luck. Mm -hmm. And saints, hey, I encourage if you see any of these people, do God's work. Do God's work. You you, you all caught up? Uh, yeah. And thank you to those supporting the work. I appreciate that. You dig? It means a lot. And I want you guys to all know, I'm not pretending as though it's going to be easy to create cultural revolution. It's not. I'm going to let you know revolution, as Brother Malcolm said, Malik al Hash Shabazz, Malcolm X, as he said, revolutions can be bloody. You hear me? Some of these people will have to die ideo uh, ideologically. <laughs> others, others might have to die literally. But the point is that we can't let these false narratives prevail, the false narrative that uh, black people can't correct black people, the false narrative that uh, to talk is as good as to do. The false narrative that you're a leader if you're a preacher. No, if you're a preacher, you're a speaker of word, not a doer of action. We cannot let those false narratives go. Bug Dad said all the neighbors in France just double checked the locks on their doors after that cooking. In a real way, they did. In a real way. Piece of trash. Boy, that boy a piece, piece of trash. 
boy, a piece of that man said, I have a family owned business. First off, little buddy, you ain't on my caliber. You see, while your mommy and daddy was creating a business and then you mooched off of their business, your little suburban fuck, while they were doing that, my dad was in the pen doing 10. My mom was out on dope. I had to make something out of nothing. We're not the same caliber of man. I'm a builder. I'm a creator. I'm a producer. You're a moocher. You're a blood sucking leech. You eat off of what other people have constructed. I had to plant the seed and grow the tree. We're not the same level of man. You don't speak to a leader. You sit down and shut up and listen to a leader. Little middle class nerd. How you middle class and still stupid, boy? How you went to suburban schools and still stupid, boy? Jay the Great said, off the principle, nothing but respect. And B, YouTube wouldn't let me send my last super chat about the last dirtbag saint. Somebody grab him. In a real way, man. How, how you grow up middle class and still stupid? That's how we know you're really dumb. It's not that you went to bad schools. It's that you're actually dumb. One of the worst conditions of being dumb is that you don't know you're dumb. That's one of the conditions. And one of the burdens of being intelligent is that you have to deal with people who are not intelligent, like this fool here. Boy. A leech, man. A leech trying to compare to somebody that's self-made. How is a leech going to compare to somebody that's self-made? And here's what really sends me over the edge. Look at how I'm living out of nothing. Look at how he living. Look at his background. Hey, bro, give us a tour where you live, bro, real quick. Just real quick. Give us a tour of this rat bro, trap. You hear me? You hear me? Give us a tour. All we want to see is this tour of your rat trap. Since you grew up middle class, let us see what you made of it through your superior intelligence. Show us how you living, bro. bro. Camera right now, I can't. Turn the camera pick the shit up and turn it around, you bum fuck. I'm not gonna pick it up for your amusement, but feel me, I'm doing all oh, right. Okay, you're scared. You're scared because you're so stupid. You couldn't take your head start and do anything with it. You couldn't take a head start I, I'm, and doing, I'm, doing right into anything. I'm doing wrong for myself. Give me five years, I might be where you at. No, no, I'm you will never myself. be where I'm at because you ain't man myself. enough. You ain't man enough to be where I'm at. You are not man enough to be where I'm at. I did things you'd be scared to do, boy. You would never be where I'm at, homie. You know. You know. You's a clown. Now, you know why don't you be life. honest with us? Be honest and show us how you living. Show us what you did with your middle class head start. Show us. But can I be real for a minute? Show us what you did with your middle class head start. Bro, let me, as a middle class. Show us what you did class, with your middle class head as, start. You know, I like you little middle class motherfuckers who got a lot to say. You talking to somebody came out the gutter. Show me what you did with your head don't start. Don't even say nothing. It's just a little house, bro. It's a... No, I want to see what you did with your head start. Let me see what you I'm did humble, with your man. head start. I'm humble, man. Why are you scared to show us what you did with your head start? You scared because you want shit. It's what? Get him the fuck out of here. See, that's what I hate. You see, he had a head start. While he was in elementary school with a nourishing mom taking his soft ass to soccer practice, my mom was out on dope. You heard me? I was in the house by myself trying to figure out how to boil hot dogs at age eight. Dolo. You heard me? Yeah. While, while his father was going to a nine to five, I might see my stepdad every now and then. He show up and put a, a, a can of OE in the refrigerator. For you middle class suckers, and OE is an old English. Got it wrapped in a brown paper bag. That's how they do it out here. Yeah. While, while you was going to school on time every day, I might wake up in the morning and wonder where my mom at and have to get myself dressed and walk myself to the bus stop while your middle class mom was driving you to school in comfort. You have to walk myself to the bus stop at eight years old. Dolo. Get in the bus, go to school, come home, go in that house and tell myself to do my homework. When I was an eight year old, you still living off your mama's titty, boy. Don't you dare talk to me, boy. You ain't never had to endure what I had to endure, so you will never reach this level because you scared. You living scared. You took a middle class head start and you still living in an apartment in your late twenties. That don't make no damn sense. I'm a hustler, boy. You go around the whole world I've been hustling. Nigga, you ain't like me, boy. I don't ever want to hear you middle-class nerds. You ain't like me. 
I don't want to hear middle class nerds act like they like me. And I don't want to hear the, these black dudes who think they from the streets. Y'all ain't like me either. Y'all is bitches. I'm going to tell all y'all what's up. Now, why do I say y'all is bitches? Because when I look at your rap sheet, you never got legit charges. I don't see a distribution charge. I don't see drug distribution. I see drug use. Y'all are addicts. I was the hustler, not the customer my whole life. I don't identify with none of y'all. I'm here for the hustlers. I don't care if they black, purple, white, albino, Asian. I'm here for the hustlers. I want to know what your life like, boy. When you scared to turn that camera around, that's because you ain't living right. You're not proud of yourself. You ask me to turn this camera around, I'm going to tell you what I really want to show you. I can't show you because we ain't got Wi-Fi on this big-ass balcony that's overlooking the south of France and these blue-ass oceans and these palm trees and these bad European hoes. The Wi-Fi going to go out when I step out there. That's the only reason I ain't going to turn the camera around, but you already know how I'm living because I've been living like this a long time, and you can check my IG to see my real life. Okay, we have Don sent $50. Baller alert. Shout out to the ballers. He said, I rarely catch your live streams. Much respect, Marquette. Appreciate you. Real one. The AJ said, nothing but respect, Marquette. People need to look at you and be inspired, not hate. People must see the great in people and let it inspire them. Unfortunately, many can't see successful others this way. That's right. It's jealousy. And it's funny, too, because I could just be a cat who came from the gutter, hustled his ass off, and did nothing for nobody. I could be that. And you still have to respect it. You still have to respect it. Say, damn. Like, read my book. If you read, there's no way you're going to read my book and read my story and I say, this is an American dream story. I could have just not did anything for anybody. But instead, not only did I hustle and earn for myself, I'm looking back, pulling other people up. Tell me what sense does it make when a young man does a consultation with me? I help him create a product. I paid for the product. These young boys. I'm paying for their prototypes. They're not even paying for their own entrepreneurial venture. That's philanthropy. Then I put it on my store and let them make all the money. And it was my idea that they came up with. What are we talking about? This is black entrepreneurship. This is black excellence. This is the stuff you hear about. This is the stuff that we live in. This bum uh, middle class nerd. How are you going to be a dumb nerd? What's going on today? Go hey, ahead. Haven said, peace to the same. I'm highly confused. So he thinks you're a white, black man because you're talking facts and successful. But yet he can't talk without fun and beauty. And Haven has met you in person. Right. And shout out to Haven. Haven stay in St. City. Know me in real life. You did? In real life, not internet land. Come on, man. What are we talking about? On Cash App, we have Sid said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Now, let me finish dogging out these pieces of trash. And let me just show you guys, in case you want to know what trash look like. That's what trash looks like. That's what you look like when you're ashamed of your accomplishments. How old are you? How old are you? 25. 25. Now, at your 25, what, what company do you run? None. Exactly. At 25, I ran companies, little buddy. You don't measure up to me. Sit down and shut the fuck up and try to learn something. You understand that? You, do you understand that? You're not letting me talk. You feel me? Do you, no, you don't need to talk. You need to learn. Do you understand that? I'll admit if you made you're, some people, you no, didn't let on. me talk. You didn't let on, me. If you're 25, if you're 25 has you sitting in a broke ass apartment and my 25 has me in South Korea giving speeches to the South Korean government running a company, shouldn't you listen to what I have to say? I'm here listening. Listen? I'm, listening. I'm peeping game. Good. Peep game in silence then. Motherfucker. Hey, George sent a cash out. He said, unfortunately, skin folk aren't kin folk. Peace to the saints. In a real way. And I ain't done with these African-Americans. Now, look, some people might say, quit. Damn, you're so ruthless. Why you got to talk to people like that? Because I ain't going to pretend I got respect when I don't have respect. Shout out to the real ones. I ain't going to pretend I have respect when I don't have respect. I do not have respect for a 25 year old boy talking to me like it's man to man. It's not man to man. You speak to me with respect, especially when you ain't accomplished shit. You should come as a student. Just like if I was talking to Elon Musk, I would be shutting the fuck up. So I might get some of that billionaire game. 
Even if I was talking to Joe Biden, sleepy ass, even though I don't necessarily respect him, I would shut up and see what kind of jewels he going to drop on me. Now, let's get to this work. We already addressed how the African-American is concerned with not being corny. And that's what you heard in this last caller. He calls in and he says, you sound like a white guy. Well, why? Because I'm speaking English properly. That lets me know he might not have traveled extensively because some of the best English you want to hear, go down to Joburg. Talk to those South Africans. They got some beautiful English, beautiful accent, and they articulate well. Why? Because they're trying to earn some goddamn money. Go to Kenya. Go to Nairobi. Talk to an educated uh, Kenyan. They're going to speak the Queen's English. Why? Because it's the language of business. It's the language of commerce. What sense does it make? Because I'm black, I shouldn't try to earn a dollar? Silliness. Second one. I wrote, uh, I talked about black males um, allowing the black female to be obese. Now, she's a side broad. You ain't got to manage her program. But if it's your main woman, there's no excuse to allow her to be overweight. There's no excuse for you to be overweight first and foremost. So that is completely out. These black women weigh about what you'd expect a defensive end to weigh. You hear me? They about the defensive end weight. And that's not acceptable. Shout out to the white guys because these white chicks be having them flat stomachs and they be dealing with... Uh, what do they call it? Eating a uh, uh, diet issue? Like when they have diet issues, they be bulimic. Disorder. Eating disorders. White girl rather have an eating disorder than look bad. Shout out. You heard me? A black girl stay at church's chicken like she live there. It's a damn shame. And that's because they ain't been dominated right. We haven't set the standards. I'm telling you that there's no more acceptance of them being shaped like a, a goddamn, um, what was fat and round? A roly poly. What's fat and round? Fat, round, and squishy, though. Fat, round, and squishy. Come on. Come on now. I need you sharper than that. Anyways, um, baller alert. Shout out to Wadey Wright. Just tune in for the live. The big homie on 10. I'll have to catch the replay. I'm highly interested in your perspective on this topic. I've been the only black man in most of my courses, job roles, travel experience, etc. Peace of the saints. This is black excellence. Wade, he's an engineer. You see, it's the poor black people that think they're dealing with white supremacy. How are you dealing with white supremacy when you live in a ghetto and all the people around you are also black? When you experience a problem, someone broke into your house, it was a black person. Someone stole from you, it was a black person. Someone bullied you or beat you up, it was a black person. Someone uh, sold drugs to you, it was a black person. All of your problems are immediate if you live in a ghetto and they're from people like you who are black people. You only really bump up against white supremacy when you're trying to accelerate. And that's not so much white supremacy as it is competition. You're competing for the same prize, financial or otherwise. I do want to give a shout out to um, someone that purchased something on Etsy and you've had communication with him. Uh -huh. He said he was watching the current stream and saw you refer to this as a potential scam. Uh -huh. He said, that's not something I want my first impression. That wasn't the scam you're talking about. Yeah, no, that's not what I was talking about. No. And that's respect that he, you know, yeah, he yeah said, in you a real way. Respect is your advice. Yeah, yeah, in a real way. Now, you guys might want uh, the cat earlier. He's like, Mark, what? It's, it's feminine. You're laying down while you're talking to guys. Look here. Let me tell you how much of a hustler I am. When I was coming on my come up, we didn't have YouTube. When I was the age of that guy who's 25 and has a big fucking arrogant mouth, but he don't know shit. When I was his age, there was no YouTube. I would listen to a wise man speak in the bed, in the shower, in the bathtub, wherever he going to talk, I'm going to listen. However he going to do it, I'm going to listen. Why? Because I'm there for the wisdom, you see? Now, furthermore, let us not be immature. I don't know if his uncle touched him or what the hell is wrong with the boy. But the truth is, you ain't never been to the beach. You can't look at a man with his shirt off. When I'm boxing, my shirt's off. When you watch professional boxing, their shirt's off. You can't deal with that. I'm obviously somewhere where it's hot. I'm in the south of France. We didn't crank up the AC. It ain't hot enough. Excuse me, it ain't cold enough. Because roasting you sons of bitches then got me lit. So I didn't took off my plush robe, you dig? And I don't feel like going to get a shirt because it ain't that serious. So if you too much of a bitch ass nigga to, excuse my French. If you're too soft and feminine and have issues with your sexuality that you can't listen to a wise man talk with his shirt off, log your dumb ass out. Because if you understand what homosexuality is, homosexuality is when you're engaging sexually or romantically with the same gender. I'm giving a lecture. Focus on the prize. These boys is weird as hell. 
how you ain't even hard body, but you concerned about somebody else being sec, uh, being heterosexual. Nigga, your, your body look like a woman body with all that fat tissue, but you concerned about somebody else's sexuality. This is ludicrous. Come on, man. Talk to me. Hey, Tommy says, keep the Saints. Vegas is a cheap, quick flight from most places. I doubt any of our club skaters would fly there to find him and throw hands. Period. Great channel. I hope to shake your hand next time then in Las Vegas. God willing. And that's real talk. I made a post recently and I said, any YouTuber who I smoke, because there's one uh, dirty Nigerian scammer, big nose guy with a, a patchy ass beard and a hairline back here talking reckless. He even mentioned boxing. I was like, oh, one of my people told me he, he mentioned boxing. Cool. I don't need to say no names. You heard me? Uh, but I'm going to let everybody know. Hey, if you got a, an issue, I'll give your ass two weeks to fly your ass out here. I'm going to give you these hands. Yeah, absolutely. All of a sudden, it's all quiet on the waterfront. It's all quiet on the waterfront because the thing is, the kind of man who could throw hands with me and win is not the kind of man who would even want to throw hands with me. Because somebody who could throw hands with me and win, that's a hard man. And a hard man is not going to want to go against me. He's going to identify with me. He's going to say, quite, all you saying is real shit. You heard me? So he ain't going to want no smoke with me. But I tell you what, you come to uh, St. City and you want to issue with me, I'm going to do everything. <laughs> shit. In a real way. And I promote that. Uh, Juana writes, like a busted can of biscuits. Indeed, there. That's what I was trying to come up. Some yeah. shit like that. Someone asked, "There's AC in France?" And I say, "I said, yeah, in five star hotels." Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's AC out here, and we didn't crank it all the way up. It still ain't kicking hard enough. Hey, Black Cartwright said, first tuition. I literally went dead broke two years mm. ago during COVID and lost everything. Mm. I took accountability, learned a skill in tech yeah. from, and now close to making six figures. Woo! No excuses, Black men. You dig? It's funny how things turn around when you start working. It's funny how things turn around when you stop doing praying to the Egyptian god Cyrus, when you stop, you know, doing all these affirmations and get your ass to work. Funny how things turn around, don't, ain't it? Yeah, shout out to Mr. Cartwright. That's a beautiful thing. That's the good news I like to hear. You caught up? Uh, now I'm back to these uh, African-American men who ain't got their shit together. Um, here, here's my one I hate the most. They live off of a female and have no plan. You heard me? They live off a woman, but ain't got no plan. And here's the worst thing about the African-American male. Not only will they live off their mommy, they live off some fat white girl. Hell, they live off a black girl. They're going to live off a black girl and have her spending her EBT to feed him in addition to the kids. So what this black girl is dealing with is she got your kids, and then you're also one of her kids. This is true comedy. Y'all living like baby boy on Tyrese, and it's pathetic. Blessings, Marquette, forever dropping gems on gems. Appreciate you from day one. I benefited immensely. Mm. Can't wait to get your counsel when I start my business aspiration. Peace to the saints. Assalamu alaikum. Peace to the saints. Walaikum assalam. We'll be talking soon, inshallah. Directed by Jabrizi said, he's still going in. I've been working out for two hours. I've been <laughs> back. He's still going. Your favorite YouTubers, favorite YouTuber. In a real way, shout out to my boy Jabrizi. That's a real one right there, boy. That's an example y'all young bucks need to follow. Now check this out. You hear me? I said, compare your 25 to my 25. Compare your 25 to Jabrizi's 25. You dig? He living in the same era. Yeah. See if you can make some moves like that, young boy. Fred said, 23 year old black software engineer from LBC. I want all the smoke to Fred. Um, is he serious? I, I don't know. That's curious. Now, the, the thing that I find curious is that if you're a software developer, I, I think he's saying that to suggest that he's a big deal, right? Like he, he's like a big deal, um, and he's sending five whole dollars. Um, so if he really wants to smoke, like we'll, we'll give you the opportunity, absolutely. Okay, while you're doing that. I, I would love to. Christian came out on Cash App. He said, thank you for the representation of true excellence. I hope he's just joking when he said he wants all the smoke. I hope that's a joke. Did you hear that? Wait, what? Christian said, thank you for the representation of true excellence. Oh, it's truly a pleasure. Amir said, peace to the saints tuition. Peace to the saints. Uh, there's the link for the kid who says he, he wants all the smoke. And by the way, put your real name, dog. Your name ain't Fred Hampton. Put your real name. Hey, we have Jonathan said, what do you think about foreign service officers? I think that's a really cool position, especially if you're a young person. It involves a lot of paperwork. Um, it's something that I considered uh, when I was much younger. I, I think it's a neat position to, to try out. And I'm one who very much so recommends uh, government 
relations and government infiltration if possible. You want good relationships around the world. So it's something to try out. Jonathan came right back and he said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. So I want to talk about this fake masculinity. And this is very timely. It's funny how you see these African-Americans get on the screen and they, they basically do everything that's on my list right here. I had a list that was written before they even showed up. Number four, fake masculinity. The young man basically said, oh, you feminine, you talking to guys, you, you don't got your shirt on, you in your bed. Come on, bro. Like you ain't grew up with your father, man. You never talked to your father. He's sitting there in his drawers. You never, you never experienced that, my boy? Damn, you never been at your uncle's house? Your uncle walk around in his drawers, make you uncomfortable, make you feel some kind of way? He's a weird-ass nigga, man. Hey, Lynn said, there is enough food and pie for everyone to eat. They always hate on someone who has put themselves on the other side of the spectrum. In a real way. Wait. Um, Just carry on with your topic. Okay. Now, we're talking about fake masculinity. So the African-American male generally knows nothing of masculinity because there's 70% illegitimacy, which is to say that your fathers are missing from the homes. Being that you grow up around your mother, who is not even a whole woman, your, your mother's a whole woman and half of a male in her behavior. We've observed that the African-American female for various reasons is hyper aggressive, tends to be very loud, is unduly emotional, feels like she has so much stress, works three, I work three jobs to take care of you kids. You know, she has all this pent up anger and aggression, and this is who you end up modeling yourself after. And so when we see the male take on the behaviors of the African-American female, and this manifests in lashing out in violence, we misperceive that as black people as masculine. We think the violence itself is masculine. Well, the exercise of violence could be masculine, but the motivation of that violence was emotional, which is feminine. Mm, not very good. So this fake masculinity that we observe is ever present in the Af ever present in the African American culture. Consider the music that we listen to, hip hop music, which we find to be very much so hyper masculine. What are we talking about? Murder, 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 and we're constantly talking about killing each other. We're not talking about killing the white man, even though we we are so fearful of the white supremacists. We're talking about killing each other. And we know this because when you listen to the African-American hip hop music, the rap music, we're generally using the term you. And we're talking about you, the listener, which is the one I make the music for because culture is an express, uh, music is an expression of a culture. A culture is contained within an ethnicity. So clearly African-Americans are making music to African-Americans. That's where the culture comes from. So when we listen to drill music like, Chicago drill music from Chief Keith and and all the the copycats who came after him. Well, all they're doing is talking about killing each other. And then what is what manifests? A bunch of deaths in Chicago. And then we think that this is masculinity. No, this is the height of femininity. On Cash App, Adam said sending tuition, peace to the saints. And I'm not sure if I read this once. I'm going to read it again. Lynn said there's enough food and pie for everyone to eat. They always hate on someone who has put themselves on the other side of the spectrum. Oh, indeed. They really do. And the African-Americans uh, are so low that when they see someone rise up, they actually, because they, they think poorly of themselves, because they truly believe in black inferiority. They hate to see a black rise up because they can't rationalize it in their mind. Just imagine you had the, the little uh, dummy, this guy right here. You had this dummy right here. He claimed to be intelligent, yet he can't speak good English. Then he looks at someone like me who's clearly intelligent, speaking English better than whites. Don't say I speak like a white man. I speak better than white men. You heard me? I speak better than all men. I'm at that top 1% of communication skills, full stop. I don't speak like white men. I speak better than white men. I don't know what kind of fucking white men you've been around unless your best friend is Winston Churchill or some shit like that. Now, because he has a low view of himself as a black male and he's lying to himself, calling himself intelligent, yet he can't speak English. When he looks at me speaking good English, he has to find an issue with it because there's no way a black guy speaks good English. So instead of me being a black man speaking good English, what he does is he says, I'm a white black guy. Notice that, that was deep. I hope you picked that up. 
black people think so little of themselves when they see a black person successful they say he's not black because black can't be successful that's deep Hampton is telling everyone that he was black but we did not block fred hampton. no no one showed up with the name fred hampton and that's not his real name anyways but no one showed up with that name and if you were blocked you were blocked you weren't blocked but but don't make up lies my boy that that's very low Everyone knows that I love smoke. It wouldn't even align with my character to block you. Everyone knows I bring everybody on, like, so no one believes you. And as Trevor pointed out, he's commenting, so he can't be blocked. Mm. There you go. There you go. Hey, Baron said, well spoken. Indeed. And the funny thing, too, is these African Americans that are coming on screen, they deserve to be taken out. They really do. Because consider this. How do you say that black people are suffering and you go against one who is removing their suffering? We have black people in Baltimore. And mind you, I worked in government in Baltimore. I worked in nonprofit in Baltimore. I worked, uh, I was a teacher in Baltimore. Kind of did the whole gambit of providing services for black people. Baltimore is an overwhelmingly black city. You have one who helped black people with education, which has been our biggest issue. You have one who helped black people with economics, gainful employment, which has been one of our biggest issues. How then could I be the enemy of black people? Ironically, when you look at dumb fucks like this dumb fuck right here who came on screen, you look at a dumb fuck like him and I say, well, what have you done for black people? Nothing. So then why is it he wants to attack someone like me who's helping us? This is dangerous. We don't have to deal with white supremacists. We have to deal with this kind of white supremacist. That's the worst white supremacist right here. The one who looks like you and secretly hates black people. The one who looks like you and would tear down those of us who are actually doing the work to help black people. That's what we got to deal with. Those are the real white supremacists. Though we got to deal with the white supremacists who look like us and collect our money for schools that never come into fruition. Deal with the the black uh, the white supremacists who look like us and collect money for museums. What the fuck we need a museum for? Hey, Coley, Coley, here, bottom two. Coley, Coley said, "Peace to the saints." I know you speak on how girls need to pay a fee in error. Mine gave me one k today Woo! for one month. Woo! I appreciate the game and everything, sir. That's never happened to me before. Truly, sweetly, thank you so much. That you heard me, that ism work for you, don't it? Hey, that's a beautiful thing. Peace to the saints. I'm happy to hear you prospering. You dig? He live in AOB. You know what that means? All on a bitch carrying on. Uh, we got a psychopath in the comments. He right. Uh, this psychopath right here. This 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 like ugly one too. Good lord. Uh, he said, I called you white for attacking your own people. You are not my people, you're not of me, you're not my people. You are a low, 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 low excuse for a black man. That's why I call you a black male. You're not a man. I'm a black man. I'm an African-American man. I'm a foundational black American man. You are a black male. You're the type that doesn't take care of your responsibilities. You're the type that runs your mouth, never does any work. You're the type that doesn't take care of your kids. You're the type that hangs your pants around your butt. You're the type that can't speak English and makes every other race think we're idiots because we've been here forever and can't speak a lick of English. You're the kind I hate. You're the kind I want to eradicate. You are not of us. You are the weakest of us. Like, for example, the Spartans, when they would have a child born and the child was weak, they would discard the child. You are that child and we are discarding you because you are too weak. You are dragging us down. We do not want you a part of us. You are trash to us. So, no, don't call me bro. I'm not your brother. We ain't associated. If you ain't a member of this thing of ours, we ain't rocking with you. You dig? So ain't, ain't no love on this side. Ryan said, have you ever thought about doing a reaction video Patrice O'Neill's Black Phillip show? Do you think he's valid? I actually did do a, a reaction to Patrice O'Neill. Something like, you know, three thing, three lessons on women from a, uh, Patrice O'Neill. So I, I did do that like a while back. You know, shout out to Patrice, uh, the late great. Very clever fellow. He had some errant game, but he mostly gave very good insights and he's very comical. And as we know that human beings, they'd rather laugh than think. So shout out to him because he was very clever. I'll give you guys a little bit of time to send in your thoughts, questions, comments, and we'll wind down.
boy, these black males are really hurt. You know, the funny thing, too, is that they're worse than the black, uh, the fat black women. The fat black hair hatted women, you know, when people are talking about them, they don't call in and go off this much. They don't call in and start yelling this much. But it, oh, what is this? This is gross. Hey, show your whole face. Person who called in under the name Leonard, show your whole face. I'll put you on screen. Show your whole face. I think that's going to be a sketchy one. Show your whole face. I'll put you on screen. Okay, this person's weird. Okay, directed by Jordan, right. he said, it's crazy how we let other right, I'm gonna put you on. dictate to us what being black is. You feel me? It's crazy. It really is. I still have it down. Not on my face. Hey, Leonard, if you put the camera on your face, which would indicate you're not about to do no weirdo stuff, I'll bring you on and let you speak up. But it seems like you're about to do some weirdo stuff, bro. What's up with bro? Bro, it's different. These African Americans are sick. I have a feeling he about to just take their stock down even more. You gonna put your face on or what? What's up with bro? Bro, weird as hell. Okay, there you go, man. Yeah. Uh, some face on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. Hey, um, so you calling for some smoke, right? Uh, no, no, no. Um, I was just uh wondering uh, about the uh. Are you calling for smoke? Yes or no? You said no. So I'm going to pull you out because, all right, cool, cool. Thank you. I appreciate you calling it. Calling for smoke. Okay, Justin said peace to the Saints. We'll catch the replay on Patreon. Indeed. It's crazy, too. The African-American male, when I see people calling for the wrong reasons, you notice it's just consistently black guys. It's like, damn, do y'all listen and think? Like, what the hell is wrong with y'all? I'd be seriously concerned. God. Come on, man. It's outrageous. Hey, Romer said, I went through the school system in South Florida and had to learn English from mm. scratch to survive. I'm disappointed in the lack of proficiency Americans have in their language. The previous fellow serves in this example. Romer, ain't that funny? Ain't that funny? And that's uh, that's why these African Americans disgust me at such a high level. I travel around the world. You heard me? You know, I might walk into a, a random like middle of the nowhere, middle of nowhere town in Albania. Albanians speak three languages. You hear me? Hey, broke, broke white person speak three languages. I might go to the middle of nowhere in Ethiopia. I'm way outside. No, I'm, I'm on a mountain. I'm way outside of uh, uh, Addis. Man, random Ethiopians speak four languages, man. Speak three languages of his ethnicity plus English and he learning Mandarin right now. Come on, man. This is pathetic. Said, just join the Patreon. Can't wait to get some of this ism to be better. Me, black male, should follow your example. You don't complain like some do. Man, you never hear the big homie on here talking about racism. Racism getting us all down. These white supremacists, we can't do anything. How weak are you when you believe yourself to be such a weak man that you can't fight for what you want? People who are overly concerned about white supremacy, that's that's the idea that they can't fight for what they want. And it's even more comical because in reality, when you count up the numbers, the whites are a global minority, not only because their population is shrinking due to low birth rates. And you can see this in places like Germany, for example, low birth rates, and they're having significant immigration. And of course, they have recessive genes. So their genes are being watered down over time. Um, you also have very high birth rates in sub-Saharan Africa, places like Nigeria, for example. Birth rate is booming. It's a very populous state. So black people are a growing majority, and people of color have always been a majority, yet you still feel like the whites rule the world. You believe in black inferiority. It's not that you're concerned with white superiority. You believe in black inferiority. You don't believe in yourself. That's the biggest issue. And you can never be a man and lead anyone when you don't believe in yourself. How could you possibly believe in the people? You don't even believe in yourself. It's pathetic. Hey, we have this said, double up. I will say as a young black man, the more successful I become, the harder it is to relate to the black mindset. Exactly. Exactly. And, and we're really talking about the low class African American mindset. We're talking about the reparations mindset. We're talking about the leftist mindset, which really was created by white liberals. You dig and black people just take everything you hand them. Oh, welfare check. I'll take it. <laughs> COVID, uh, COVID relief fund. I'll take it. Crack. I'll take it. <laughs> Single mother households. I'll take it. 
you know, that's that's pretty much what they do. Church's chicken. Oh, take it. Does a black person even own church's chicken? They damn sure buy it though, right? Does a black person own Kentucky fried chicken? I, I, I see a white, an old white guy on the on the image. Shouldn't it be a fat black woman as the mascot? They damn sure do eat it though, don't they? Man. And when I come on here and I talk about real entrepreneurship, people are somehow not realizing that I'm the fucking guy you need to listen to, period. And I don't say this for my own aggrandizement. I say this for the simple fact of I want progress. I want progress. What the hell can a museum do for black people when really we need to learn how to do some black business? What can a school do for black people when it ain't never opened its doors? Come on, man. Donovan says he's Brother Marquette and speaks to the same. I just attended a fairly large business expo to gain some needed exposure and networking for my two LLCs. The lack of black male representation was disappointing. This right. It was a timely live stream. Right. But take your ass to a little Boosie concert. Take your ass to a little Boosie concert. Niggas everywhere. Uh, take your ass to a, 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 a the baby concert. Any baby. The baby. Lil baby. Um, baby. Like what other babies are there? Sada baby. Uh, baby this. Baby that. Any grown ass black man calling himself baby. Go to their concert. Niggas everywhere. Hanging out of trees. Niggas everywhere. Um. So I find this to be strange. You know, when these low class blacks are concerned with white supremacy, they don't even deal with white people in the real world. They deal with the systems white people created and they patronize the businesses white people own, like Church's Chicken, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And they even have the nerve to be proud of their consumption. They go to their jeweler, Icebox, and spend up all their money. They go to Johnny Dang. They're black supremacists, and they hate white supremacy, but they go to Johnny Dang and spend all their black dollars with it. It's funny, but then you got me, who I'm the white guy, apparently, but then I take black kids, and I say, hey, black man, create you a product. I'm going to teach you how. I'll walk you through. Cool. Then we put it up for sale on thesassin.com or mdblabel.com or manandwomanbrand.com. All websites I own, a black man. Then you got young black people selling their products, black empowerment, black business. And then you even have wise blacks, the leadership class, the talent in 10, the talent in 10, they'll go and buy the products. That's black economics. You hear me? Yeah. That's what we really need. But somehow we'd rather listen to some uh, flamboyant motherfucker in a suit deride black women and, and that's the movement somehow we rather listen to some motherfucker say i'm eva tunde king kong consciousness uh pan-africanism a motherfucker saying that while sitting in philadelphia come on man what kind of shit is this or we rather listen to a motherfucker uh with a beijing hairline hairline look like he didn't drawn it on with a goddamn sharpie sit here and talk about uh, yeah, I'm building a, a museum so y'all can know y'all history and understand the hidden contributions historically of black people. That shit is fantastic. But fuck the past. What are we going to do today? Tell me how to get to this bag today. Fantastic that the, the Egyptian pharaohs were black and they was dripped out in jewelry. How are we going to get this gold today? Teach me about that. So I do that and and, uh, and, and something's wrong. Then these dumb N-I-G-G-E-Rs come on here and attack me. For doing the very things that Martin Luther King never got around to doing, huh? <laughs> hey, that's said, crazy. Idris said, "I don't believe in white supremacy. I believe in hustlers because we all got to struggle." Period. Let's get it. Ryan says, "I don't understand why our community trashes people like us for speaking proper English. It's pathetic." It's it's and it's the ignorant among us, and the strong among us must marginalize them and put them in their place. That's why I take no mercy on these dirt bags. Solomon said, "I'm." Sick I was in class reading the black box instead of doing assignments on a liberal week black male's book to further the idea of victim mentality. Talk to him. Chris, Ooh, we reach in the youth. Praise the Lord. Chris said tuition, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. In a real way. I'll give you guys a little bit of time to send in your thoughts, questions, uh, opinions, tuition, and then uh, we'll call it a day. David sent $50. Baller alert. He said, Mr. Burton, this one is one of your best dreams to date. Latinas deal with this issue as well. I've been told by ignorant Latinos that I sound white. 
I went to UC Berkeley and worked mm. for a major software company now. Speaking proper English is required. Let's go. Let's go. Talk to them dirt bags, man. And here, let me let me talk about my Latinos real quick. You heard me? Um, because I, I I'm serious about that too. I find it funny, and I I man, look, your boy been in deep with La Raza, so I'm I'm going in. Buckle up. Damn, should I do a separate stream? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a whole nother thing. But let me briefly say to my Latinos, it's funny when you have a Latino say like, "Oh, you don't speak Spanish." Like they created that shit. That's dumb. Cause last I checked, they try to act like you're a white Latino cause you speak English, not Spanish. But last I checked, English is a language that comes from Europe. Spanish is a language that comes from Europe. So they're both white languages if we want to play it like that. So to all my Latinos, one, I think Spanish is a beautiful language, you dig? And I think uh, Latinas are beautiful women, you dig? But let's not play games and act like speaking Spanish is any better than speaking English when they're both European languages that have come to you via conquering and colonialism. Let's just like, let's get that out the way. You dig? Now, give you guys a little bit of time to send in your thoughts, questions, comments as we wind down. Yeah. Shaya says, peace to the saints. I want some smoke if you have a few minutes. Thanks. I, I just might have a few minutes for Shaya. And I do re recall that name, right? That's supposed to be a fan, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I've seen that name before. Yeah, I'll give you a little bit of smoke, Shaya. Come on. Come on with it. I'll drop that link for you, Shaya. Somebody says, Shaya, keep it in line with Dean, please. No, it won't be within it won't be within Dean. Nah, because he's about to go up against God's work right now. So it won't be within Dean. But I'm gonna let him come on anyways. Let me find that link. While you're doing that, David Great said, Peace to the saints, respect chief. A good soldier respects and honors hierarchy. I look forward to meeting you, a like minded man of principle. In a real way. Yeah, go ahead, Shay. We got that. Um, we got that link for you. There it is, right there. Come get this smoke. I just put sorry, I put it down in the chat. He writes, All the haters were once fans. This is this is factual. And then you know what happens because they weren't raised with their daddy and they didn't get disciplined. Your mom tend to be too soft or she tends to be emotional. When you're raised with your father, he might punish you and then explain to you why you were punished. So you understand that this is not because I'm mad at you. This is not because, you know, I don't like you. This is because you have committed wrong. And like, just like when I lash uh, the young boy who came on earlier, 25 year old kid, the fuck you going to tell me, man, especially when you can barely speak English and you live in a rat trap, you know, at that point, you need to be listening. And what I said to you, play this back and try to learn something. But that doesn't mean we have to stay on bad terms. So I'm giving you a chance to learn something. And it's okay to learn from your, uh, your errors. It's okay for your errors to be pointed out. Men can admit when they're wrong. Men can learn. Uh, your name is pronounced Shaya? Shaya. Shaya. Okay, thank you for that. Yes. And, and you want some smoke, huh? I want a little smoke, a little smoke. That's a pity. That's a pity. I always thought, <laughs> you know, I, I thought people who follow the Dean were wise men. I see you got your beard. <laughs> no. Um, not strictly, no. So no is the answer. Okay, understood. Exactly. Right, talk okay, talk to me. Yeah, so I mean, I actually agree with one of your points where you say um, if you focus on yourself as an individual, the racism and anything that could be affecting you doesn't really matter because you're really just focusing on becoming better. So, um, but I want to ask you a question, if you don't mind. Sure. Don't you think that you need um, the, the education and the institutions so that when someone does become successful in business and starts getting to the money, that they then are aware to then, I guess, be a philanthropist and give back to their community? So I'm not saying that, um, that uh, I know that, again, the business is important, but I think the education with the business is, is I think, ideal. Um, I'm going yeah. to answer your yeah. question. And again, you said it was Shia? Yes, yes. Shia. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure that you know, I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, Shia, number one, do you listen to yourself? Like When you're speaking, do you listen to yourself? Sometimes. Okay, good. Were you listening to yourself when you asked me this question just now? Well, I was just kind of just going off of uh, what was in my head. 
Yeah. Well, I, I, I just asked because I was curious as to if you have a sense of what you asked me. And okay. do you recall how you started the question, like your first couple words when you're asking me the question? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Let me hurry along. So I believe you said, don't you think, or do you think, mm -hmm. which is to say that you didn't properly formulate a question objectively. You were being suggestive, which is essentially when you're asking your question, it's a loaded question. You're already loading in what you believe, which means that you're not really asking me a question. You're trying to forward along your point which makes me suspicious of if we've come together to sit at a table as men to, you know, exchange knowledge. That's just one thing on the basic side. Like if I were to ask you a question, it would be structured like this. Do black men need institutions to give philanthropy back to the black community when they're successful or not? Don't you think that fill in the blank? So that's just number one, just side note. Now getting to your question. Uh, let me make sure I understand you. Uh, so are you essentially asking me if I think it, it's required that you have formal education to be financially successful? Is that your first question? Yeah, not just formal education, but specifically about um, your culture and your, your race, specifically. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so number one, I think that every people should have, and when I say people, I'm saying those who share traits. Every people should have knowledge of self. And this is something we see mentioned a lot in the African-American community. We see the five percenters talk about knowledge of self. We see the Nation of Islam talk about knowledge of self. I'm not talking about Sunni Muslims. I'm talking about black Muslims uh, as, you know, educated by uh, Dr. Uh, by Farrar Muhammad, by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan. They talk about knowledge of self. Most black people don't have knowledge of self. And I think that this is critical, but here's the funny thing. You would be a fool to think your enemies are going to teach you about you. I repeat, if you view the white man as your enemy, you believe the white man is a white supremacist, what kind of fool would you be to expect the white man to teach you about you? And what do I mean when I say the white man teaching you about you? Two ways. Number one, media, which is controlled by the white man currently. Number two public schools in America, which are controlled by the white man and increasingly the white woman. They're teaching you about you. You go into a public school as a black kid, which is mostly what we get in the urban environments. We learn black history, the version that they want us to hear. We celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday because he ain't really did shit. That's why we celebrate him because he ain't did nothing. He basically went along with what the government wanted. Peace. So they teach us the Martin Luther King story because he didn't achieve much and he was weak. Then they teach us the uh, Harriet Tubman story because they want to elevate the black woman generally higher than the black man and position her as our leader, which they successively, successfully have done in our families, which is why I'm here. Then they almost never mention the Honorable Marcus Garvey because he tried to connect you to your roots in Africa, which is what you are, blood -wise. They almost never talk about Malcolm X, but truth be told, there's not a lot to say because he was a mere speaker. He was, a, he was the, uh, the national spokesman for the Nation of Islam. The real genius was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, whom they never talk about. Most of us don't know his name. Then there's other lesser known figures like Martin Delaney. Then there's the ones that the white liberals love like W.E.B. Du Bois because he was more sophisticated. He was an academic. All that knowledge, and if you want to learn something from Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, or from a Dr. Henrik Clark, or Dr. Ivan von Sertema, one of my favorites, or from a uh, Sheikh Anta Diop, one of my favorites, real scholars. Or from a Neely Fuller, who wrote a masterpiece, which is hard to find. You're gonna have to do that on your own. You're gonna have to come to someone like me, a black person who knows the knowledge and can impart that to you. That will not occur in your public school. That's number one. You shouldn't even seek that or expect that in your public school. It's not sensible. What is the model we have observed? Chinese people have something they call Chinese school every Saturday. They go, they learn language and culture, even if they're in America or any other random place you can name. They learn Chinese culture. If you're Jewish, you learn your culture from your, your religion and your family and generally from the temple or excuse me, the, the synagogue. That's where you go. It's your cultural hub. The African-American has nothing of the sort. We don't have African-American school on Saturdays. We don't have a synagogue to go to. Huh? We have me. 
That's what we have. The true speakers of knowledge who actually have a wide enough spectrum of the real black scholars to deliver it to you. So that's number one. They will never teach us that. And we shouldn't expect them to. That would be dumb. You shouldn't even want to learn black history from a white guy. Period. That's number one. Then number two, um, your second piece, my understanding is that you're saying, don't you need institutions to be able to give back to black people? Is, is that right? Well, um, I was saying that um, with knowledge of uh, yourself, yeah, I think that's important so that you know to give back to people that came from the communities that you came from, might be in the, you know, the, the ghetto, you know, the impoverished neighborhoods. Well, within the yeah. fasting, we have a specific philosophy of, you know, we got this three sentence Bible, or if you like a three sentence Quran. Number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. And number three, be good to good people. Be good to good people. Not all people are good. Not all people in the grand sense of the human species. Not all white people. Not all Jewish people. Not all Muslim people. Not all black people. Not all African American people. We have a, a lot of rascals within our midst who are complete trash. I, I just talked to a couple of them on this live session. You hear me? If they were on fire, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call 911. I'd watch them burn. So I say that to say this. Do we give back indiscriminately? No. I did that when I was a young, unsophisticated, uneducated, inexperienced youth. And I write about this in my book, The Black Box, which people can get on Amazon.com. And I don't say it to sell books. I say it to give knowledge. You can get a low-cost copy at Marquettism.com. When I was young and unknowing, I wanted to give back. I gave back indiscriminately. What I know now is that you give back to those where it's an investment when I was in Baltimore teaching, I remember those kids that I had promised. Those are the ones I poured into the most. There was a young Muslim girl named Sanaya. I still remember her. She would sit in the front row in the center of the class because she was hungry for knowledge. I always made eye contact with her because I know she wanted to know. Whatever I was talking about, math, history, English, she wanted to know. There was a kid named Hakeem who was a very rowdy, rough Baltimore kid who would probably beat the shit out of you if you're one of his classmates. He was not a joke. He was not a game. But while being a very violent, aggressive child, he was also highly intelligent. And he respected me because he could tell we had some similarities. I poured into him very much because I know he is one of our leaders. We can't tell right now because he's an aggressive kid suffering trauma in Baltimore, but he is one of our leaders. I poured deeply into this kid. I talked to him before school. I talked to him as his teacher during school. I talked to him after school, and I talked to him on Saturdays. I poured into this kid. Then there were some kids that even though they were kids, I said, this kid is lost. They're beyond repair. And I would love if I had infinite resources and infinite time, but I don't. Let me be strategic in where we pour. Now, that's how you raise up a people. You raise up the leadership class. You raise up the ones who are paying attention. The other ones, they're lost. If you don't marginalize them, uh, they will tear down the ones who are leaders. They will tear down the ones who can help. They will cause havoc in our neighborhoods. These are the gang members. Not the gang members of criminal organizations to make money off of the proceeds of illicit substances, but gang members who will kill you because you're wearing a blue shirt. Literally, for that reason only. These are the ones we have to eradicate. They are evil. Now, so I say that all to say, do we need to give back? Hell no. Nah. We don't need to give back indiscriminately. We need to give back to our talented and our well-intentioned black people who want to make something of themselves. And I don't even limit it to black people at this level because truth be told, I would have never been able to get where I am unless I had some white folks who believed in me for my talents, not seeing me just as a color. Because I kid you not, you know when I was raising money from black people, you know how many of them invested in me? Not a damn one. Not one fucking black person invested in me. OK, and I want to say that in in fact, it was black women who were holding the strings. Then I was like, OK, that's not where I went to black men who were holding the strings. None of them invested in me. And, you know, that was really messed up because here's the thing. I look great on paper. I went to multiple top universities, distinguished alumnus. I look great on paper. I look great in person, clean cut, tall, good looking, articulate. If you don't invest in me, there was something in your fucking head that was discriminating. The racism I experienced was from black people. None of my investors were black. Let me further say, those white folks, they invested. And I'm very thankful. It opened up my mind because truth be told, before they put their money where their mouth is, I too was convinced that they hated me. I too was convinced that they were a racist. 
had I not had them, I wouldn't be able to be here. And also shout out to my Latinos. You heard me? Real hustlers. You dig? Because before I could even get to those white folks, I took money from the gutter, from real hustlers. And I was a real hustler. So I had a little bit of my own, but it came from Latinos, mostly Mexicans that I knew and hustled with and grew up with who were honorable men who put money in my pocket for me to make this happen. And one black guy, one black guy, shout out to, to, to the homie. You dig? He's a friend of a friend. One black guy put in money. So I want to say that to point out to you and to point out to everybody watching, oh, ain't it funny that the motherfucker who's an obvious winner, I'm an obvious winner. You ain't taking no gamble betting on me. I've been winning my whole fucking life. I look just like a winner. When you see me out, I look just like what, what winning look like. When black people fail to invest into me, that's because there's something fucked up in their head that secretly hates black people. I say all that to say, when we give back, we give back to good people. We give back to those who are most in need. It just so happens African-Americans are in great need. So I might prioritize them in giving because they have the highest need, not because they're African-American. I got love for all peoples. We need something that is beautiful enough to appeal to all peoples. I think, you know, if Islam is true, if any religion is true, it was for all of humankind. It wasn't for a specific uh, religion. Um, thank you for, for listening respectfully. Talk to me. Yeah, um, I just two points. I mean, I agree with what you said about giving specifically to certain people because, I mean, the saying says that a fool and his money will soon part ways. So I don't believe in giving money to every black person because you're going to give it to them and they're going to waste it. So I believe in giving back to black people that are actually going to use it for, you know, you know, good reasons or to invest and grow it. So I agree with that. I just wasn't specific about who to give it to. And then just the last point is that I think the issue with black people um, predominantly is that, as you said, they don't know themselves. And I think that's the issue. They don't even know that they don't know themselves. And that's an even bigger issue. As you said, a dumb person doesn't even know that they're dumb. Mm. So I think for me, I'm more concerned about getting people who don't know themselves and that they don't even know they don't know themselves to try to potentially have some glimmer of hope that they can realize that they are their own worst enemy. Mm. And that's why I think it's important to have the knowledge of self. And then also, like you said, the business aspect where then they can actually, you know, you know, thrive and be successful and, you know, give back to people that are really going to use the money wisely. Um, but um, that's, that's really it. I think that's very yeah. meaningful. And truth is without the knowledge of self, you won't have the, the faith and self-belief you see one thing that i'm fortunate about and this is why i reference my book the black box because it tells you i have a copy by the way I, I bought a copy i didn't read it yet i'll be honest but i bought a copy when it first came out so i appreciate that yeah mm -hmm. um and, and i'm not even so much talking you're talking to the the folks who need to get on their path you know i was very fortunate enough that i grew up around black people who actually love being black which is rare, which is rare. You hear me? Um, and I, I was able to learn to love being black. And then I was able to actually come to understand what being black actually is, not only in terms of historical, what have we contributed to the world, but also in the sense of literally, what is it to be black? Melanin, what is the melanocyte? How does it pop, uh, put pigment into our skin, our hair, our eyes? You know, is melanin a super what are the benefits of melanin? Like, for example, you'll see the uh, people who have light eyes in the older age, they'll have those big glasses, those big dark glasses. You've seen that before? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, well, if you're ever around some white senior citizens, uh, they might have these big dark glasses. They, they're experiencing okay. macular degeneration. Basically, okay. they have, uh, you know, your eyes have a certain amount of chromatin, which is a chem chemical that's broken down by the sunlight. And the damaging sun rays, if you have light eyes, your eyes are more likely to suffer. If you have dark eyes, even when you run out of chromatin, this protective chemical in the eye, melanin acts as a loose substrate to protect your eye so that your eyes endure over time. And, and the similar thing happens in the skin. You know, black people do better under the vertical sun rays of the uh, vertical sun rays. That's why in Australia, white people don't belong there. And the sun is giving them high instances of skin cancer. These are all the things I understand, deeply scientific understandings that most people wouldn't even understand uh, if I took out the time with a fucking chalkboard. They just wouldn't get it. Um, but 
sometimes it's not for everyone to know. It's for me to know and for me to give them the simple version and for them to run with that. But the funny thing is most of them don't even want the simple version. You hear me? They don't even want the simple version. So I ask myself, am I going to waste my time with a, a, a dumbass uh, black kid who comes on at age 25, ain't made a damn thing out of his middle class head start, which most, most black men never get. He wasted that. And he's coming on arrogantly trying to tell me something instead of sitting silently so that he might learn something from someone who has taken out time to not only read all the books, huh? but I've also talked to the scholars face to face. Like, uh, you know, your name is uh, uh, Muhammad or Shia Muhammad. Um, you probably heard of Dr. Bilal Phillips, right? Dr. Bilal Phillips. No, I haven't. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Well, I ain't going to go through all the folks. But anyways, right. I've talked with the scholars one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if we're talking about a Honorable uh, Louis Minister Farrakhan, I've been to Mosque Mariam in Chicago. I've been through the, the mosque and dealt with the brothers in Baltimore, in Oakland, in San Francisco, in Los Angeles. You know, I've seen them transition to before when they weren't dealing with um, the Church of Scientology. I've seen black organizations change from real black organizations to now they're white organizations. Most people don't know that that's happened to the, the Nation of Islam under uh, Farrakhan's leadership, not to say he's not a great man. You heard me? Like, again, hierarchy. If he was here speaking, I would be silent and try to learn something. But I say that all that to say is we all need a, a, a speaker and a messenger that's fit for our time. None of the people that have been referenced are fit for our time. You, you got a guy like uh, uh, Umar. We wonder why he's failing. He's failing because he's trying to do business, but he's not a businessman. That's why he doesn't know how to take a bunch of money and get a real estate property and then turn out a business. He doesn't have experience. You got a Tariq Nasheed, and he's concerned with the vanities of putting Beijing on his hair to look like he has a hairline when he doesn't have a hairline. Instead of just saying F it and just shave it off like the big homie and be the ball head lover. You're concerned with trivialities. So, no, I don't have respect. I'm not going to pretend I have respect. And I'm going to tell you that I got the straight path. And the past is so damn straight. I don't know how people look at it and see anything of it. Right. I agree. I agree. It has been truly yeah. a pleasure to, to yeah. speak with you, Sam. I appreciate you sharing your wisdom and being a great example to all of us on how to comport yourself especially when you walk into a situation talking to someone that you know could be aggressive for you. So I appreciate that example. Yeah, like I said, I have a lot of respect for you. I mean, um, through through good and bad, through agreeing with some things, I still have respect for you because you're just a solid dude. So I appreciate, you know, what you represent. And, I, you know, I sometimes I listen to you too much where I'm not doing my work, but, you know, <laughs> but, well, you know. I, I yeah. really appreciate that compliment and, and the respect yeah. is mutual. And mm -hmm. inshallah, may we uh, you know, be able to build together. Thank you. Peace of the saints. Peace of the saints. Okay, we have Christians in the cash shop. He said, please dig in what it means to know one's self. There are levels to knowing the self. You know, there is the, the level of, you know, what am I? I am a male. What am I? I am a black male, which means you fit into the Negroid anthropological racial category. What am I? I'm an American culturally. I'm an African-American subculturally. These are all things you want to understand about yourself. These are the things that make you tick. These are the things that also get help you understand how people look at you and what they perceive. You see, one of the reasons that I understand racism and I'm not so bothered by it is because say the police pull me over and treat me disrespectfully. Of course, I don't like it, but I, I comprehend why. Because you're me, I know how African Americans tend to behave. And so I understand why they're behaving in a certain way because they're anticipating me being a certain person. Uh, knowledge of self is critical. I would expect that you should understand your history on an ethnic basis. You should understand yourself uh, as a, component, uh, a citizen within a nation. You should understand yourself as a uh, one within a certain gender or sex, male or female, man and woman, and what you should be growing into. Um, those are some of the basics in terms of knowledge of self. Hey, George said, Sass and Duffel Bag backpack just came. Great work of art. Mm. I am eager to put it to use. Peace to the scene. I hope you do, Sam. You'll enjoy it. I actually got two of them with me right now uh, during this trip. You have a one of one and the one that everyone else has. Indeed. Pete Frawley said, Mark Quentin gave my full respect with this one. He's a true leader. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. We have 
Jermaine, Nate, Solon, and Brian all just became patrons. Word. Hey, shout out to the folks who are patrons because you know, you really do support this work and you empower me to be able to give this message. And I hope that the real ones do stick with me because the things that I'm saying are serious. The change that I'm pushing forward is serious and it's it's not just speeches on the internet, it's organization, it's the concentration of voters in uh, Las Vegas, it's real political influence. You know, we're really making moves. You know, We're not just talking about museums and schools we're about to build. Uh, so I appreciate those who are sticking by me because we're on the easy part of the road. There will be greater success and there'll be greater challenge. So shout out to the real ones who endure. And I know the, the ones who are false flagging, so to speak, you know, they're like, no, I follow you. And then they ask like a question that like you can cl clearly see like the passive aggressive within it. Eh. But shout out to the ones who are real members, really mess with the system. Hey, I hate trolls said, have you and Umar had a conversation? I think it could be a great conversation and good things can come from it. Both of you don't go tit for tat as we as people tend to. Unity, not always uniformity. I hear that. Let me let me see if I could pull up something for him. Austin just became a patron. Shout out to Austin. Those are the real ones. Shout out to the real ones joining the family. Dren also just became a patron. In a real way. We need that. We need that. And I want you guys all to be prosperous. I want you to continue being uh, connected and protected. You dig? And while you're looking for that, we have Goldie and Joshua bought the black box ebook on markwhatism.com. In a real way. I and, did put the link in the chat earlier. And, and that's a game that will last you a lifetime. Joanna said, I just found this platform. I'm impressed. That's the second super chat of the day as well. Okay. Shout out to Joanna. And I, and I thank you for that. It, it really takes a, a real mind to be able to understand what we're doing on this side. So I appreciate that compliment. I take it seriously. Okay, let me let me pop this up for you guys real quick. Check this out. Gentleman said, have I had a real conversation with Umar? What do you see on screen? Your Instagram. Okay. Okay. There you go. All right. There you go. So, and by the way, just like side note, I had a lot of real conversations with a lot of people, you know, and I've done work with some of them who are more serious than others. You dig? Like, uh, can somebody tell me who that is? Can somebody tell me who this guy is? Now notice there's no one in the background. We're not like, we're in a private meeting. Just side note. Can somebody tell me who that is? I'm gonna give them some time because I want I want you guys to know who the real hitters are who actually get things done. You heard me? Like not the this this internet stuff, this Kevin Samuel style stuff. Now let's talk about real hitters who get things done in real life. You take that that. There we go, Bloomberg. Yeah, and who's Bloomberg for those who don't know? Let's talk about real life out here. And and mind you, I ain't got everything on here, but let's just we just taking a casual scroll through to see what life is really like. Do, no, here's a, an important one right here. Now let's see how, oh dang, they can see they can see who it is. Who's that right there? Who's that? Somebody let me know. And also observe that the whole plane is empty. Observe that we're flying in a commercial plane that is completely empty and it's just two of us on there. Do you guys think do you guys think in your mind that we just happen to be the only two people flying to Washington, D.C.? Or might there be a reason that there's only two of us on this plane? A commercial flight. You ever seen a commercial flight completely empty with just two people on it? You guys use your heads. I'm different. Don't compare me to a Kevin Samuels. If you go to bosses and you say Kevin Samuels, they say, who? Don't compare me. See why you're scrolling through. Pete Crawley said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And see, like you go to fans, internet people, yeah, they know these names. But go to bosses. Um, Who's that? Real quick, who's that? Who's that? So we're talking about bosses. Anybody know who that is? We'll give you time. 
why we're giving them time. I hate trolls is back. He said off camera, how did the combo go? What stopped the combo from going further as far as what we want for our people, our mission? Not doubting you at all. I just heard you mention him and Mysterious. It's not our people. We're not on the same thing. So number one, I'm messing with some, I'm I'm di I'm kicking out ism, your Marquetism, which is an original philosophy. He's piggybacking off of the the words of like a bunch of other scholars. You hear him talk about um, uh, Jawanza, or he basically is spouting out things that were written by, uh, I think the guy's name is Jawanza Kanjufu, who's like a pioneer in uh, you know writings about African American boys being misdiagnosed and getting a poor education. And he's always saying he's the cousin of Frederick Douglass or the auntie of Harriet Tubman. I don't, I can't even keep up with this stuff. But like all that stuff is like play stuff, man. Like what, what's the organization? So we're not, I, I have a lot of respect for Dr. Umar. I want him to be successful at something. I just don't know what the fuck he's trying to do. Um, so it, there's no our people. Either you a saint or you ain't nothing. That's how we getting it out here. Okay, nine says Virginia Governor Terry. And then nine was, Honest and said, read that on the, you can see it on the caption. Okay, I can respect that. And and that's another thing is that, you know, people might know all these internet figures. Like, yo ass could tell me who who uh, Kevin Samuels is, and yo ass could tell me who, uh, who, who, uh, who else are, are they, do they talk about? Whoever the hell y'all talk about. But let's talk about bosses who can actually get policy change. Let's talk about bosses who could write million dollar checks. Let's talk about bosses who could get you out of jail with a word. Let's talk about power. Like we're not on the same level. These fucking internet nerds. It's just, I find it disrespectful. Motherfucker called me Kevin Sant. What are we talking about? I'm the big homie. Fuck out of here with this kind of shit. The Hollywood impressive. Send a super chat to let you know, former governor of Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and if we want to, like we was political, we went pan-african like who we got right here who we got right here like for my muslims who we got right here we in the homeland bossed up you dig like whoever the big deal dude is i might know him i might know him had conversations made plans with him i might know him yeah, come on, okay, man. We have Ronald said, have a couple medical device ideas for diabetics and another for everybody in general. What should I do as a first step to get out of the idea stage? So he has a medical device for what? Diet one for diabetics and another for everyone in general. <laughs> for everyone in general. It's nice to have a larger market, number one. But when you say everyone in general, it, it just like the, the sound of it doesn't sound quite legit. So if you have something that's you believe will be effective for a specific group of people, let's go ahead and roll with that one. And I would also ask myself, which of these things would be lower cost and an easier lift in terms of government regulations to bring to market? Because generally speaking, you're in a highly regulated industry, medicine or you know food and beverage, things like that. These are things you have to ingest, highly regulated very expensive takes a long time to get to market okay we have on cash app deontay sent 50 dollars. baller alert tuition oh just the tuition that's yeah. love man and uh here we go um anybody know who this is imam siraj wahaj so like look i could keep doing this i'm not gonna carry on with this because it's just like but the the point is that People can talk about doing all these different things, but they don't have the network to get these things done. They don't have the experience to get things done. They're just preachers. They don't have the organizational ability. They don't have the capital. They don't have the influence. They're just babbling heads on the internet. All of the pictures you saw, those are all before the saint in the center. The saint in the center ain't made me nobody. The saint in the center ain't made me no money. The saint in the center ain't shit. Marquette Devon Burton is the big homie. You dig? So I can get a lot of things done that these guys can't get done because they don't have the connections. They don't have the know-how. They don't have the willpower. They don't have any of those things. I'm showing you leaders from around the world. I'm showing you leaders in the religious sector, in the political sector, in the civic sector. I'm showing you ballers and bosses. That's how we move it. I hate trolls that sent that to Super chat said, Marquette doesn't make sense, I guess. Focus on your tribe that wants to do better. Can't save everyone. 
period. We ain't got time or resources like that. And here's the thing. Some people don't want to be saved. Jerry says, I realize a lot of people, celebs we know on the internet, aren't the people with real power. It's the ones who live a quiet life with a lot of money and influence make power moves. Exactly. Like all those people I showed you, uh, Bloomberg's a billionaire with a B. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, do you think if you went to Bloomberg and say, hey, hey, Bloomberg, have you ever heard of Kevin Samuels? He'd be like, uh, no. Hey, Bloomberg, have you ever heard of uh, Umar Johnson? Uh, no. Hey, Bloomberg, have you ever heard of, um, who's the other, uh, Tariq Nasheed? No. Hey, Bloomberg, have you ever heard of Marquette Devon Burton? You ain't even got to say the saint in the center. Mark, it's my government, Marquette Devon Burton. Yeah, for sure. I, I had him up to my office. You know, we spent time. I took him through headquarters. You know, we, we were in the batting cages together. We went down to Baltimore. We had lunch. Yeah, it's different. That is the kind of person that can get the job done. The only reason I keep iterating this is because you got goofy guys who are faking the funk and because a lot of young people or internet people, they lack experience. They think that because you're internet famous, you, you have power. That's not the case. That is not the case. Money is not the same thing as power. Likes and views are not the same thing as money. I'm going to repeat. That's a goddamn quote. Somebody send that to me. Views and likes and subscribers are not the same thing as money. Money is not the same thing as power. Understand those differences. And I always remind you guys who would learn from me, a lot of things said in the society are completely errant. They say things like, it's all about who you know. No, it's all about who knows you. I bet if you say Tariq Nasheed, do you know who Mayor Bloomberg is, the mayor of New York? For sure. He is all about who you know. Well, he knows who the mayor is, but does the mayor know him? Huh? See, my life a little different. The mayors know me. The governors know me. The presidential candidates know me. And I'm making investments because here's the thing. Let Carly Fiorina mess around and be the first female president. She know the big homie. Huh? Let, um, let, uh... Who else do I want to name that you guys don't know I know? You did? That you don't know I know. Let one of these guys mess around and become president. Stephanie Rawlings Blake, she ain't going to win. But let somebody like her become president. I already know him. Yeah, like that's going to help. It's not about who you know. It's about who knows you. They know me. It's different. So just imagine how disrespect, disrespected I feel when you got a goddamn 25-year-old nerd from the suburbs who barely speaks English, has made, led an unprofitable life, get on here and try to tell me something when I sit down across from billionaire bosses. Man, what the fuck? You should be happy you just get to talk to me. Hey, Ronald has a question about the medical device. He said, as a diabetic, the idea would work, bring change. Yeah, I mean, some of the best ideas come from uh, necessity. And, you know, that's something we could work through. I just want to give you a heads up. Uh, you're not about to get to the dollar quickly. It's going to take some time. But one thing I can assure you of is in the medical space, there's never uh, you're never going to run out of funding, especially for something that is widespread enough like diabetes. You're not dealing with a, a rare disease like vitiligo or something like that. So I think you have a great opportunity depending on what your cost of production is, depending on what the risks are. Um, and also there's a whole world out there. You can get investment in places like Singapore or in the Middle East where they like to accelerate things and they'll help you get to market quicker and they'll write that check quicker. So there, there's some work that can be done, you know, if you're serious about that. I'm All right. Hello, oh, Cash Kit, right? She ain't going to win. Don't let her see this. I know, man. I think she knows. She, she's no fool. She's no fool. She kind of went out of politics in disgrace. You dig? Um, yeah, real activities, real world activities, man. Anyway, Saints, I'll give you a little bit of time to share your thoughts, questions, comments as we wind down. And also just real note, uh, real, real side note real quick. Think about how funny it is when you have these impoverished internet nerds who live in the middle of nowhere. They try to make an exposed video on Marquette Devon Burton. How is it the billionaire couldn't expose me but somehow you, the internet nerd who has not two pennies to rub together and lives in the middle of nowhere, you expose me. But 
you're telling me I wasn't vetted before I got to sit down one on one with a mayor of uh, Baltimore, with a governor of Maryland, with a, a governor of Virginia, with presidential candidates. You know, oh, I wasn't vetted before all that. Like, come on, like this stuff is ludicrous, man. And it always comes from blacks because they don't believe that a black guy can do what I do. That's why they're just trying to figure out how did it happen. And I want to let all of you guys who are real movers, you dig big steppers, make your moves in the shadows. Let them continue being mind boggled and wondering, like, how'd you do what you did? How'd you hustle your way up out of a, a, a one bedroom Section 8 apartment where you have to share a bed with your moms? How'd you hustle your way up out of that into south of France with a view like I got? How'd you do that? Let them keep guessing. And they can check out the view on Instagram. Yeah, you can check out the view on Instagram. I put my IG if you want to see what the life like. Zanaria said tuition on Cash App. Shout out to Zanaria. Super player right there. It looks like we're all wrapped up, huh? Yeah. Fantastic. Saints, it's been a pleasure to have this little bit of time to fellowship with you. Let us. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Rex. He's a real one. He said, for the new subscribers, buy the black box. Indeed. Indeed. Because if I ain't real, who real? <laughs> you dig? He had a boy, he on his lunch break. <clears throat> Unbelievable. He on his lunch break from a factory job trying to talk crazy to me. This stuff is just beyond belief. It's beyond belief. It really is. Anyway, Saints has been truly a pleasure. Let us end this with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you. The creed of the assassin. I'm going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace of the saints.